Welcome back to more of the grind. We're actually almost done, and it's so exciting to be almost done. I just wish that Pokedex was sorted in a way that was easier to read. <laughs> That's my current issue. All right. Let's Scooby Dooby do this. Yeah. Where am I? I'm in an old lady's house. All right, somebody queue. What happens if I search? Um. Uh. Um. Um. Re really scary Nintendo video game video game music really scary Nintendo music that could be long in a horror game okay you got that in eight dimensions oh that'd be so cool hold on uh, spooky music, 8D. Spooky scary skeletons and 8D audio. Oh, an 8D horror experience. Oh, hmm, that's cool. Okay. Okay, I can't find anything specific. Let's just click this. This is from Metroid Fusion. All right, we're on the grind, boys. We're on the grind. We got to get those, that Moko, that Ellen, that, uh, that Moko and that, uh, what's it, Lunasa. Okay. All right. Now, the first, the only thing you get for completing Pokedexes up till Black and White 2 is a certificate that says, way to waste your time, jackass. That's why the first time uh, most people completed their Pokedex was when they were promised a reward. At least I did. And it continued to be in, it, in every other game following. There's really no merit in doing it in the earlier generations. It's not very easy to do. It's not very fun to do either. There's too many, there's too many additional hurdles you have to jump through for it. And the reward isn't really worth the hassle. Whereas the Shiny Charm is definitely a great... Uh, reward. Ooh, I like the forest temple. The forest temple's great. Alright, we're back to grinding. So, chat, what are we doing today? What's our plan today, huh? What do you, what do you think we should do today? You want to read more stories? You want to do something else? What else can we do? I don't know what else we can do. I'm, I'm dry on content. Because I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be beating the shit out of these things for the next uh, foreseeable future. There we go. I'm stuck. I'm on cord. I can't stop. I stopped. Hopefully, you evolve sooner rather than later. Live. Unofficial Q and A. <laughs> Nobody said that. I said that. But no, really, like. I like reading the creepy pastas, but we've gone through so many at this point that I wonder, like, have we, have, how, how, how scrapey are we getting for this kind of thing? You know, are we really scraping the barrel? I mean, double kick actually does kind of real damage. There's a lot more. Well, where are they? Hmm? I don't see them in front of me. There's a lot, but it's hard to pick. I mean, do you know any off the top of your head that are bad? Portal Hell? Why do you have that on the ready? Are you okay? Portal Hell. Bluter is very angry at G. Okay. It's like Jupiter... Jupiter talking to Ralph. What the... What? I'm sorry, Chef PP. Game Boy Advance SP Blue Edition Creepypasta. Super why the evil readers. What am I reading? What am I reading? Do you really want me to read this chat? You want me to read Portal to Hell? I don't want to grab one that's boring as hell or has baby murder. Yeah, I mean, I don't either. 
but like it's really hard to all right can you find one that's like really bad but like almost to a point where it's intentionally bad you think that's possible is there gonna be baby murder in here hmm I certainly hope not tired of this baby murder man who get who's slipping this footage into an anime studio sure I got a terrible one right here and he links the stream oh there goes my browser bro you re I really read that and then my fucking, my fucking computer did the did this bullshit great it's funny because you can still hear the music going even though I have no access at all to my chrome die chrome return chrome All right. All right. Hmm. Okay, ready? Here we go. I'm going to start reading Portal Hell. Hello. It's been nearly eight years since this happened. I still own the copy. What we all know of the game created by Valve Corporation, Half Life. But if you've played the series, you have most likely played Portal or Portal 2 at once or twice. You know that extremely hard puzzle-like game that was released in 2007, Half-Life 2, Portal, and Team Fortress 2 were released on a console game titled The Orange Box. I used to play the game on my brother's 360, but I did get a copy on PlayStation 3. So about two years later, after I had sold the game, I rebought it pre-owned at GameStop. The copy I received was in pristine condition. It looked just like new. It didn't look like any different from its original design. Screw this, let's go to the gameplay. It was all normal. Levels 1 to 18. It started to get a little strange around level 9. The one familiar with the game know that GLaDOS, the main antagonist of the game, who talks to you throughout much of the game, tries to kill you after level 19 is completed. That's a spoiler! I didn't know that! But she claims she was just playing around. That played as it normally did, but when I got halfway into the level, it got a bit Strange. What a fucking time, Moko. Now, I'm not trying to be a bastard or anything, but you certainly got the fucking levels for evolving things really high. Now, I assume that's so people actually use the, the evolution shards to diversify their team. And that's all well and good, but does it really need to be level 38 and 40 and shit? <laughs> this is so obnoxious. I'm so annoyed! I'm just gonna punch it. It'll die to toxic. Towards the end, I like I like to go into this one room where you can go through these doors, and there's even secret rooms, and you can see some of the stages you've already completed through a window. I like to take stuff out of that room and throw it through a portal that leads into the sludge that kills within an instant. Why? So I did that like I usually would. To be honest, it was entirely fine until I reached GLaDOS at the end. She had no alterations in character and it was like she was in the end of the game but she did do something i different i tell you she tried to incinerate me again it cut right back to the part at level 19 do not give up on toxic gas actually it cut right back to the part at level 19 where she pretends to murder you except the flames were higher and there were no white walls for portal to be shot except that the flame the shooting portals that wouldn't form and i fell to my death i could hear glados here, GLaDOS laughing faintly. Ha 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 ha. I assumed it's just a glitch. What the hell was that? She was supposedly just kidding the first time. The loading bar came on screen and when I was back in the stage, I wasn't back at the boss fight. I was in pitch black room. I still had the portal gun and I could just shoot portals anywhere. After running around for about two minutes, I came across an incinerator. You know, the one that toes, the ones you to toss, toss your companion cubes in. But I just kept moving forward. I eventually was shoved into that incinerator, but it didn't just burn up in there. I fell into a portal, and it looked like ones that were coming, that come out of the weapon you're equipped with. But it was red, and inside it was what should have been the incinerator, or so I thought. I don't have bingo. <laughs> I don't have bingo up. I jumped into the portal, and I began to fall in the tornado-like path when I saw red orange light at the bottom. This sequence reminded me of Charlie's Nightmare from All Dogs Go to Heaven. But I did hit the light, and I did end up in hell. How would I describe it in this game? 
uh, well, a bunch of rusty turrets were everywhere, kind of like the crap turrets in Portal 2. Cubes were visibly in the wall, and the environment was red and orange. Oh. Was there lava? I'm not even going to answer that. What do you think? Yes, it was everywhere. He answered it. He said what he did. Those rotting rusty turrets were there, so there were cubes. I was just on a wooden bridge. A wooden bridge in hell with lava, by the way. And there was no music in the background. When I reached the dead end, I began fighting GLaDOS, but she was rusted in her voice, even slightly. I noticed a knife hanging from the top of the screen, so I shot a portal at it. The knife fell and hit one of GLaDOS's wires. So that She then just fell off of her wires and hit the platform I was standing on. But the impact was enough to crush it, and she sunk into the lava. I tried to head back to the entry, but the portal was gone. About 15 minutes later, when I was about to shut game off, I realized all I had to do was shoot a portal into the lava, which would make a red portal, despite that the orange portal are referred to as red portal sometimes, I think. What? What was that sentence? <laughs> okay. It's kind of spooky. I jumped in and surprisingly made it back to the original level from the real Portal game, except there was no boss. I was just running around like a freaking idiot for just like five minutes until the screen cut to yellow. The game picked up on the norm and the ending played, where GLaDOS sings Still Alive. One really weird and creepy thing was that GLaDOS barely even said a thing in that fight. Yes, she did say a few things from the official boss fight, but the voice was slightly deepened. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, say ah, uh, scary. After the game went back to the selection screen, I just shut the game off and I didn't say anything about it. I took word from others that contacting Valve isn't the case. I probably just picked up a bootleg or unreleased DLC map or something, but I do not consider this to be that scary. I actually found this version kind of interesting, since I always would end up in hell at the end of the game. Because I flat out suck at it, to be honest. There you go. Hmm. Good. What do you think, chat? I just found a great one? I don't believe you. I'm choosing to not believe you. Alright, first things first. Team Fortress 2 Creepy Pasta I Spy. Okay, I'll check it out. Just give me a second. I gotta do a little. We gotta do a little placement theory real quick. Oh, shit. Moko in the box. Uh, what, um, uh, was that an accident? Why did you do that? <laughs> Thank you, Twisted Squid Evil, for a hundred subs. But I don't know why you did that. And, and now I can't get his creepypasta. Why did you do that? <laughs> Seriously, that's, uh, alright. Definitely didn't earn that, but I will take that. That's gonna pay for a FUMO at the very least. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Oh, you got timed out, you dumbass! <laughs> Alright, I got it. I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it, I got it. Mm, Alright, chat. You know, this is the time you're supposed to post an infinite amount of Jun posting. Like, you know that's why the emote exists, right? One fucking person post it! And yet, I didn't get one. Man, get a job. <laughs> He'll be back in 60 seconds. He'll be back in 60 seconds, don't worry. Okay. He didn't even say anything. He just dropped a fucking, like... He didn't even say anything! <laughs> okay, alright. There you go. Congratulations, chat. We did it. Uh, I've earned I've earned the month's salary. They did that the Christian too. Did they say anything? Who is he? I have no idea who that is. That is a lot of fucking money. That's a that's an absurd amount of money. Well, all right. I'm not doing any like I'm just not doing anything specific for or that, but I, I do plan on doing something that I've already did sub incentives for. I'm not gonna make new sub incentives. What a fucking jump scare that was. Hakrude. Maribel. Okay, so Mar uh, Hakrude is what I need. Hakrude's next. Okay. He's an oiler. He must be. He has to be. I'm choosing to believe he is. 
<clears throat> you will regret. Oh, he's back. <laughs> he's back. Okay, Hakurei, Kassen. Hakurei, Kassen, Mystia. Okay. Let's see, let's see. Um, I'm, I know Hakurei's in here. There's Kassen. Oh, she's so small, though. Okay. Yes, I still have Bossy. That sense that it was already hit, though. Uh. Hakade, Hakade, Hakade. That's Helper Mistia. Where's Shibi Mistia? Shibi Renko. There's, there's Maribel. Oh, Mima. I don't have Big Mima. Big Mima's a legendary, I think. So, her... Um... Hmm. Okay. Where the fuck is... Where is she? Hmm. I don't... I don't see. I don't see. I... I, I'm, I oh, there she is. There she is. There's Chakurei. But wait a minute. I thought I had a Mystia. Where's Where's Mystia? Huh? Huh. I just don't see her. Did I never catch a little Mystia? Bottom left box two. Oh, no, there she is. Okay, I got her. <clears throat> oh, I appreciate that very much. Thank you. But yeah, that it definitely came out of absolutely nowhere. So you got you got your desired reaction. <laughs> Thank you very much, man. I really do appreciate that. And I'm pretty sure Christian does as well. But that is a lot. That is a lot you just dropped on there. That's all. Hopefully that doesn't do anything negative to your finances. I tell you, it does a lot good for mine. And as promised, that money will go to... Where will that money go? That money will go to all kinds of wastes. No, that's not true. I don't waste, I don't waste money. I don't waste money. Hold on, I saw Futo. Okay, Futo is needed. Okay. The money I make here goes towards important things, like living. I would argue that's pretty important. He would never waste money. I, I wouldn't. I'll, I, I wouldn't, though. When have I ever wasted money? Huh? Can you even think of a single time that I have wasted money? Your money, specifically? You think you think you just you, you sub and I say thank you for your sub and I just I take your five dollar bill and I just I light it up. I light a doobie with it. Hmm? Use, using those five dollars, light myself up a doobie? Because that's not what I that's not what I do. That money stays. Okay. Nickelodeon All Star, you got me there. I, I cannot say anything about that. That was, in fact, a great waste of money. In fact, that was a waste of $50, $60, which means that was a waste of many subs. That was probably a waste of like 20 subs right there. 20 subs paid for that game, and I, I squandered your money. And that is just the worst thing a streamer can do. Chat, look on the bright side. At least I'm not over here complaining about... Uh, Finances while also having three different subscription services. Now that said, I do have subscription services. <laughs> I, just, I have one to Adobe and I have one to the gym, so it's you know unfortunate. But you, you get my point. I don't. I don't have. I don't pay for YouTube Premium. I don't play for Netflix. I don't play for Disney Plus. I don't play for Hulu. I don't play for any of that shit. None of that shit. None of that shit. Everything that I have a subscription for is important. Although Adobe can kiss my ass 90% of the time, but I didn't want to get Vegas. You think you can pay me? Remember when you bought a special edition Toa and never opened it? I mean, I did do that, but what's your point? 
It's not a waste of money. I have the. I have it. It's. I still have it. It's not like it's disappeared in the box, right? But I own it. That's not a waste of money. It went to the company to show that I wanted the game. Oh, she's red. You know, it took a while to find one of you, huh? But now you get to be a thumbnail. So, congratulations, champ. Um, well, let's hit her a little bit, I guess. Okay. Hmm. I found a shiny, chat. I found a shiny. Whoa, I found a shiny. Isn't that insane? Doesn't that make you want to gift subs to show your support for the shiny hunter? It's not like I've been in this grass patch for like five fucking hours. Hmm. She's wearing a red dress. All right, I got her. Can we get another hundred gifted? Well, I mean, the button's right there, dog. It's all you. You're the star of the show right now. You can be the main character for 15 seconds. <laughs> you got it. I believe in you. Oh, hold on. I need to see if we can learn Toxic. Okay. Greedy? What do you mean greedy? How am I greedy? When have I ever required anybody to give me money? If you think of that, hmm? Don't do it. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't say that. Don't, <laughs> don't, 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 don't. I'm worried because you might actually be able to. <laughs> don't. Oh my god. Unless you work on an oil rig, don't. <laughs> Chill out. Okay. We're just money to him. That's not true, uh, six month subscriber, which is $30 my way. That's not true at all. Hey, there you go. Look at that one. Thank you, Zay, for gifting a sub. Hmm. Oh, I pressed A button. Okay. The only one who couldn't learn toxic was you, so that's fine. We'll just do what we need to do then. Should I start reading this creepypasta now, chat? Team Fortress 2 is the spy. Oh, man. They got a they got a really good image for this. It's the spy, but his he's, he's like a skull. He's a skull emoji. More Metroid music. Dude, it's just Metroid music. It's all Metroid music. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to start reading now. Ready? Here we go. Team Fortress 2 Creepypasta the Spy. Hmm. I am not sure if I should or shouldn't tell the story. Chances are nobody will believe me as I no longer have any proof, but I feel for the safety of others I have to talk about the spy and why you should be as afraid of him as I am. Okay. Alright, okay. The story takes place on October 27, 2012. A few days before Halloween, I was looking forward to hanging out with my friends through our annual movie night. On the night, though, I chose to stay home and play Team Fortress 2. My favorite class was The Spy, and challenging but rewarding, I was so addicted to play, I even had the outfit for a cosplay at my local game and anime conventions. Anime. As well as a butterfly knife so I could learn how to flip some tricks. <laughs> okay. As you can tell, I'm a freaking nerd, but proud of it. Gaming is a passion for me, and Team Fortress 2 is easily one of my favorite games. Okay. During this time, the Halloween event, the game was going on, and I was trying to get achievements and special items. Chat, that's not shiny, right? Is that a shiny? Or am I crazy? That green looks shiny as blue. Okay. Okay. All right. I, I thought I was seeing things. Are you sure it's blue? Because in the full uh, the files you gave me, it's white, or one of them was white. So the shiny color is wrong in the files. Unless so that was blue and it's like white blue. All right. All right. All right. All right. That's fine. It's good. Hmm. 
Chat, you all say you want Fumo Snail, and you know this the second you get it, it's, you're just not gonna do anything with it. You're not gonna care about it, you're gonna lose interest in it. You've, you've hiked it up too much to a point where it could never deliver. Which means I will never give it to you. You would have to pay me a life-changing amount of money to add that emote. That's that's the that's that's the only way you get it. So I need blue hair and white clothes. Yes, yes, okay, then that's correct then. That is right. Oh you don't have an individual sheet for the regular today though. I had to put the full uh I had to put the full like character sheet and crop it out. Okay. Ready? Where am I at? During this time, Halloween event of the game was going on. I was trying to get the achievements and special items that were available this year. So I was playing Sniper with the Huntsman, primarily so I could kill Marasimus Mar when he showed up. Everything seemed fine until I killed by a spy. The kill cam came up, and it was someone named Spy with no hats or unlocks of any kind. Well, that's embarrassing, I thought to myself. And here I thought I was good at the, at the class, and I ended up getting killed by a new player. At least I figured he was a new player, considering his loadout. Oh well, I was about my business and continued to play. I was in the middle of fighting Marasimus and was killed by Spy again, and it was odd because I thought I was doing well to prevent him from backstabbing me. From backstabbing him me? What? Clearly he wasn't a new player. He was smart about avoiding until I was completely distracted. So I figured why not play Spy as well? It could be fun to play against someone who obviously knew what he was doing, so I went Spy and played as normal. Hmm. Sure, hit the slap button. I went about stabbing and shooting people, trying to find him so I could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him in a spy duel, but I never could find him. So I went about going after his team instead, just before killing an enemy medic, I was killed yet again, same player. This guy's good, I thought. His timing is perfect. Is this like the hunter story? <coughs> oh, god damn it. Sorry. Ah! I'm good. Ah! 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 Okay. Where am I? I decided to check the scoreboard to see how many points he had, but there wasn't anyone named Spy. I was a little disappointed. I figured he left the server and decided to go ahead and went back to trying to get the achievements again. But I was backstabbed by who else? Spy. And to add insult to injury, there was a message in the server chat that said, You are an amateur and a fool. I was getting a little bit agitated. I could never seem to find this guy before he killed me, and I wouldn't see him the same thing every time when the camera zoomed in. A spy with a stock loadout and a smile on his face. Yeah, a smile, like he was grinning at the fact that he killed me. I decided to just quit and come back later, but I was still a little agitated. Not at the fact that he kept killing me, but the fact that I tried to look for him, even check the scoreboard for his name, and there was nothing. Who the heck just leaves for a brief moment that comes back to kill someone? I admit it worked, but how would they know I was looking at a particular point in time? It just doesn't make sense. I joined a non-Halloween server. Decided to play on Badwater. That means nothing to me. One of my favorite maps for Spy. I was having fun up until I was killed by a spy. It was him. Again, same look and name. Only, he seemed different somehow. The texture was changed a bit. His suit looked darkened due to aging. His face looked pale. The same thing ha kept happening. I would try to look for him. And I would still end up being killed. Like in the other server, I didn't see him on the scoreboard. He ended up dominating me, and I saw a message in the chat again. I'm going to cut you like a Cornish game hen. I don't know what that means. Does he say that in the game? I don't know. I don't know the game. I don't. I don't play. Uh, I don't play Team Fortress Two. <clears throat> oh, hold on. I scrolled too far. A little disturbed, I asked my teammates if they saw this guy, if he was killing anyone. They all said these spies aren't that good and weren't having any problems. I asked them, what about Spy? They said they weren't being killed by anyone with a name like that. While I was typing another message, I was killed by Spy yet again. And asked if anyone saw that. I saw this reply. Do you have a bind or something? It keeps saying you killed yourself. I stopped. I must be losing my mind. So there's a player only I can see who I know is killing me, but nobody else has seen him in-game? And if his message is in chat, and to anyone else, it looks like I am suiciding. This is crazy. How does any of this make any sense? I say to myself, and I saw another message in chat. May I make a suggestion? Run. Then my game froze briefly. And it said I was disconnected from the server. A little creeped out, I decided to join another server. The map was upward. We were still playing at the first point. 
I picked soldier and started moving out of spawn. I checked around the spawn door. Nothing. So I started heading to the front line. Uh. Checked my back once, nothing. Moved a little further, checked it again, still nothing. The side of the rocket jumped the rest of the way and looked back behind me as I was jumping. I saw him standing still as I was flying in midair, only for a brief moment, then cloaked and disappeared. I decided to hell with this and went back to find him. I searched above in the tunnels up by the edge of the cliff. Nowhere to be found, so I started moving towards the front line again, trying to check my back every so often. He wasn't stabbing me this time. I would check my back every so often and see him just standing there, looking at me, before cloaking and running away. I would chase him, but I figured it was pointless. I'd never find him. He was like chasing a ghost, no matter what I did. I would never catch him before he killed me. He was toying with me. He knew I couldn't do anything to stop him. Eventually, I gave up looking for him and tried to have some fun blasting people with my rocket launcher and blowing up. It was a good time for a while. Then I was pushed... That then I was then as I was pushing the cart, I was backstabbed again. This time, this uh, this time I was legitimately freaked out. I saw him again, but this time he was zombified. His suit was torn and raggedy with dried blood on it. His right arm and leg and its bones showing at the knee and elbow, and the balaclava was now over a skull. The flesh was gone. It shouldn't have scared me as much since it was part of the Halloween event. But after everything that's been happening up to this point, I was scared of the sight of this dead spy. I left the server and decided to check my recent players list. Surely, there was something there. Every player has a Steam profile, right? I looked at the list, there he was. The name was just Spy, and the avatar was the Spy himself. A close-up of the face with a twisted and evil grin that went from ear to ear. And his eyes, they had a tint of red in the pupils. Almost demonic. What did he mean by this? I checked the player profile page and the image was still there the evil smile looking right at me he had no location headline or player introduction the page was almost entirely blank i looked at his team fortress 2 stats he had a total of four th 44,204 hours logged in the game no fucking way i looked at his player stats all of his hours with a spy and he had over a million points and his longest life match and his longest life matched his playtime Meaning that this player, whoever or whatever it was, never died. I did the math. And he'd been playing since October 10, 2007, the day the game was released. You did the math for that? I went back to his profile page and the headline had changed. I'll be seeing you. I was freaking out. I know there wasn't, uh, that wasn't there a few moments ago. All of a sudden I heard this loud noise coming from my speakers like a siren. Then a blue light came up, realizing my computer just crashed. I rebooted it back up and got to the login, typed in my password, and was greeted with nothing on my desktop. Nothing. No shortcuts, no background, nothing at all. Explorer still worked. It was still working, and I could still navigate the taskbar, but a small amount of static can be heard from my speakers. I want the item first. Alright, so now we get to the next one, who's gonna take a fucking eternity to level up. Alright. And where was I? Toxic. Hmm. I should have hit the priority move. Oh well. Where was I? I figured that I must have gone to some kind of fake Steam site and downloaded a virus. Hmm. <clears throat> and I decided to do a quick scan of my computer. But for whatever reason, lost my connection, decided to reconnect. I updated my antivirus and malware software and began scanning. It started up Steam and they sent a ticket to Steam support. Whoever this bastard was, I was going to report him. It was not, this was more than just some typical hacker or something. It's like I was being stalked. I checked my recent players list again. His name was still there. I clicked on his name and got a 404 error saying the page did not exist. I refreshed as many times as I could, but the result was the same. I closed Google Chrome and decided to check the scan. Suddenly, every program I had opened crashed. My taskbar disappeared and the static increased in volume. And the black background changed to a horrific image I will never be able to forget. The image of the spy grinning from ear to ear appeared again. But worse, the spy was now a decayed corpse. You could clearly see where bits of flesh used to be and his smile was showing. Where some teeth missing. The right side of his face was blown out like he took a shotgun blast to the face. 
but he still had bits of his eyeball where it used to be, where the left eye stared directly at me. It was yellow with some small red circles and cracks in it, similar to how yours would look if you went a long period of time without sleeping. And while this image is stuck on my screen, I hear one of the spy's voice lines booming from my speakers. I'm coming for you. Yeah. Then I hear him laughing, normally at first, then increasing in volume and slowly becoming more and more distorted and twisted, looping over and over, creating an echo in my room. My ears were ringing as it kept getting louder and louder. I covered my eyes, but still it was cutting through, piercing my eardrums. I reached for the power cable and pulled it out, shutting my computer off instantly. I've reformatted my computer since then. I had no choice. After the incident, my computer wouldn't get past the Windows startup screen. I had to restart my, reset my computer to factory settings to get it working again. Since then, my computer has been running fine. I've been able to play other games. I told my friends and family that my computer crashed and I had to reset it, but I never told them what I saw that night. Teen Fortress 2 is obviously on my Steam account, but until now, I haven't installed it. I'm downloading it as I type this, and I hope that I'm sharing this with you. I'll be able to play it again without shaking. I missed the game but I can't get rid of the fear I have of the spy hunting me in my, in my real life. I have been having nightmares since then, and they always play out the same way. I come home at night as I'm trying to unlock my door. I feel a knife being plunged deep into my back and being, it being pushed down, ripping through my spine. The spy's decaying hand over my mouth and his eye looking directly into mine from my back, of course, because he can do that because I'm getting stabbed in the back laughing as I bleed to death, and every time I wake up sweating with my butterfly knife in my bed. Is he the spy? There you go. Great story. Excellent story. He wasn't the spy, main. He was the spy. Hmm. What is, the, what is this paragraph? What is this? Oh no, hold on, I'm gonna read- chat, I'm gonna read this paragraph because I don't know what this paragraph is, it's kind of weird. Oh no, it would seem that my scary macaroni has been down to death, but there is another way, a secret hidden not known by the general pubic at XXL size light at the end of the stained tunnel of the killers and horrifying businessmen with no face on. It seemed to be called in the present of be called subordinarygamers.wikia.com. Huh, that's strange and unusual. Stra strunusual. <laughs> it would seem that the seams of the facade of the seeming to seem to be ordinary gaming gamer website for gamers has tumbled down, tumbled down, tumbled down. The sight of horrifying, unsight, inducing, horrific, eating, inciting into the past of Stroza present and Futorian literatures has been root and toot and turnish by the sight of those French Frogersons. But I have a plan to put in the slow motion with a W. I will run out of the ideas in the middle of my sentences. Huh? Scent? Where? I hope it's lavender. Oh, it was just lavender. Wait, I forgot my, about my plan. I guess that would mean by forgetting about your plan. Not very good. No, really. They really say that. Okay. Um, yeah. That was a, that was a comment. That, that was a comment on the... <laughs> there was a comment on the on the on, on the week on the thing. Uh, I wrote it. I didn't write it. It was from 6-29-2018. Hmm. What the crap? Oh. Uh. Uh. What do you mean, Kai, you final lifes? What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Alright, chat. Well, I hope you had a great time, because I certainly did. So, that was good. <laughs> be careful. The spy could be any one of us. That's what he says, right? That's that's the meme? I feel like, I feel like an old man trying to fit in with the younger generation whenever I talk about anything uh, regarding Team Fortress 2 because <laughs> I don't know shit about that game at all. God damn it. I 
hate when I do that. Hmm. I like this idea that you go on an online game and you get griefed by some guy who's really good, but he's actually, like, in the game. And he's like, I'm gonna stab you IRL. Chat, you ever see Sword Art Online 2? That was like the plot of Sword Art Online 2. In the Gun Gale, uh, RPG. Where there was like, this guy's, uh, what he does is if he beats you in the game, you die in real life. And it's like, whoa, how he do? And it turns out it's just that it's... I'm gonna spoil Sword Art Online 2 for anyone who cares, which will be all of you, because it's a masterclass in writing. Anyway, uh, what it actually, it turns out what it actually is, is... It's not that they die when they lose, it's that there's actually, it's actually a two-person team. So, they find that your information's, and one of them breaks into your house, and then when you're killed by the, their avatar, they inject you with lethal, lethal, uh, liquid. They just, they, they just put you down via lethal injection, so you die in real life at the same time. And it's like, whoa, 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 oh god. So yeah, um, that, that was the plot point. Because they were remnants of, uh, they're, they're remnants of a, a player killing group, and player killing in Sword Art Online was not good. Because if you die in the game, you die in real life. So they were like actually murderers, and they're a little crazy. And the people who woke up from Sword Art Online, who were part of that group, never really fully recovered mentally, which kind of makes sense when you really think about it. Why did I bother switching? You know, I just realized that you you did that, but you weren't even a sub yourself. <laughs> that you were the first time sub, Twisted Squid. And there you go. 101. Dalmatian. See, it rhymes. That's all I had to say on the topic, chat. That's all. Would you like to read another one? There's another one here. It's got it's got ponies on it. It's called You Become What You Despise. You want to read it? There's also one Marty. Ice Cream Men. Oil Rig Confrontation. What the fuck are these? What are, what are these fan feeds? Hmm. At least Mima was like level 30, so she'll probably get to level 40 pretty fast. Which should be the evolution for her anyway. I don't know if you actually want me to read it, chat. I think, I think you just say you want me to read it, but you don't actually want me to read it. You're afraid. You're you're act you're afraid of what may happen if I were to read that story, but I guess that's the whole point of a creepypasta, right? Is to be afraid. This is a surefire way to spook you. Hmm. Memer. The only the only pony creepypasta I read was the one about God Messenger, Lily Blossom. That was insane. That was absolutely insane. God's light. All right, well. I like the, the pose on the back sprite here because it looks like she's got her arms up. Like she's actually like, you know, like strutting. Like arms out strutting, coming in, coming in for the kill. <laughs> she's pissed. Another angle down. She's like, she's, she's wide chested. And she evolves at level 40, because of course she fucking does. So we're gonna be here for the next 50 years. Rainbow was gonna kill. Yo, Smelling Salt actually kinda... Kinda bonked it. Chat, is this Pokemon music? I feel like this is Pokemon music. I don't know why. I don't have a story to read. I found another one. Okay. Is it good? Man's putting his life on the line. Alright, well I can beat up Mize, but not, uh... Sorry, Satonos. The Amazing Mega Man. That's a good name. There's a Mysterious House of Black and White too. Maybe. It does sound like Pokemon music to me. Yo, what's that say? 7981 in the true story of Five Nights at Freddy's three hours ago. Ooh. Ooh. Might have to check that one out. But first. 
first. The Amazing Mega Man, July 11, 1989. It was the day that Mega Man 2 came out on the NES. I had been long awaiting a sequel to my beloved Mega Man game, so when the time finally came and the game came out, I came too. Um, that's not what it said, just in case you were wondering. I was ecstatic and immediately went to my local game store once my parents got home, which unluckily for me was 8 at night. Once we parked next to the building uh, uh, that beheld my coveted game, I burst the door fast with a bolt of lightning and rushed over to the man at the counter before my mother could even leave her car. A bit unnerved by my odd amount of excitement and the fact that I appeared to be all alone, he hesitantly said hello and welcome to... However, before he could finish the sentence, I interrupted, You need copies of Mega Man 2? You need Mega Man 2 here? It's true. It says it's a true story, so we gotta read it. Chat, you're focusing on the wrong story. We're talking about Mega Man right now, okay? Pay attention. The man obviously caught off guard with my rudeness and my overexcitedness quietly said, Um, yeah, I've got a few copies left. The man then scurried into the back to go get the hot selling game. And walked back into the room game in hand. However, at this point, he got a bit less jittery as he saw my mother standing beside me, assuring him that I wasn't just some juvenile delinquent running around without any parents. My mother asked the man how much the game would cost, and I told her it would be a hefty price of $20.99. My mother looked down at me with a scornful look, but I did my best puppy eyes, and eventually I was able to get my mother to crack. She handed over the, uh, the, the wad of cash to the man with the $20 bill to the end of the counter, and finally the game was mine. The car ride home felt like it took centuries. I had to sit there and wait to play my game, but finally, after about 20 minutes, my game and I had arrived home safely. Jump kick. Sure. The first thing I did was run in the living room and insert my new treasure into my NES. The Amazing Mega Man. The game booted up as normal, and there was one problem that made my heart sink. When it was the loading screen, it froze. I was horrified, and my jaw nearly dropped down in my chest. Acting quickly, I took my cartridge out, blew on it, and put it back in. I waited for what felt like ages for the game to start. However, all of my waiting was futile as the game just wouldn't start. Both distraught and dismayed, I decided it would be best to just take the game out of the system and try the next day. However, when my hand reached the slot, the game randomly turned on. And for whatever reason, the TV was at max volume. After a loud scalding from my mother and her usual promise of chastisement, I made my way to the TV and turned it down. You should have done that first, man. That sounds fucking annoying. Mega Man 1 has its fans. I don't understand how it has enough fans that it got a sequel, at least. But yeah, it's got its fans. This guy's like 10 years old, I think. Or 12, I don't know. <sighs> at this point, I couldn't. I could care less about my mother's promises of chastisement, and I nearly popped. Or my nearly popped eardrums. All I cared about was playing my long-awaited game. However, I was incredibly confused when I picked up the remote. For whatever reason, I automatically started a boss fight. Bewildered, I decided to pursue on the rely uh, 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 pursue on and rely on my knowledge of the previous Mega Man game to help me through. I was quite surprised to see I got a boss that looked just like a mere fan. And the top of the screen said, "Defeat Air Man." When he hit me, I was brought aback by how much damage he I had taken. Yeah, he does that. I had to find a way to kill Air Man, as I thought it was only a way to continue the game. After an incredibly strenuous and arduous half hour, I finally found out how to beat the bastard. This man is tenacious. He spent 30 minutes losing to Air Man. It's quite simple, actually, and I was angry at myself for not catching on to the strategy sooner. All I had to do was jump over him and hit him in the back a few times. Leaving me no time to recover, immediately after that battle, I was thrown into a battle with Metal Man. Metal Man threw saw blades at me, which I had attempted to dodge. I was at a loss for words as I had no idea how to kill Metal Man. At first, I thought I could shoot the saw blades, but there was to no avail. It took me upwards of 50 tries to beat the guy, and this time the strategy for beating him was a bit more complex. I was shocked when I saw the next boss. The next boss was Mega Man. Hmm? It was a mirror match. Mega Man versus Mega Man. The other Mega Man mirrored all my attacks and movements. When I tried to shoot him, he tried to shoot me. That was a boss in Mega Man 1, wasn't it? Like, I'm pretty sure that was just a boss in Mega Man 1. Was the... in the Wily stages. We got spooky music. 
submerged castle. When I tried to shoot him, he tried to shoot me. It was damn near impossible for me to hit my opponent, but eventually I faked him out enough to land a hit. However, I was confused, as after only landing one hit, the screen faded to black. I was tempted to yell out of the game and ask it what happened. However, I was about to. Some words appeared above the screen and said, Smiley face. Having fun yet? Ellipses. I took the cartridge out and stopped for a second. What could the game have meant? I pondered to myself for a while. I mean, it probably was wondering if you were having a good time. Cartridge clutched in hand. It was silent in the room. In fact, it was too silent. Just as I began to notice the eerie silence, Magman himself appeared on screen. I pinched myself as I knew there was no game in, and I needed to check if I was dreaming. Hmm. To the bottom of the screen said, I'm having fun, aren't you? Then it just went back to black for a few seconds. However, an image of Mega Man with a devilish grin flashed on the screen repeatedly. The more the screen flashed, the more detailed the image became. And the more twisted, too. Airman was hanging from a tree, but what appeared to be his intestines. You know, his robot intestines, because he's a fucking fan. Are you kidding me? What do you mean, his intestines? He's a... Mm, getting angry. I'm getting angry. I can't, I can't be getting angry at this. I can't. It doesn't make sense. How do you, how does he have intestines? He's literally like a fucking, he's like Hitmonlee. He's like a, a squished, squished image Hitmonlee. Unbelievable. Alright, I'm gonna keep reading now. <sighs> the pixelated graphics led much to the imagination normally, but there was no question that an airman was hanging there by his intestines. The screen flashed more, the soon the image panned out a bit. Eventually also showed Metal Man, he had a saw blade jabbed to his chest along with other slice marks on his face and body. He's a robot. He's a robot. I was confused, as I thought, I always thought that Mega Man's enemies were robots, but that was the last thing I was thinking at the bo at that moment. Really? Because it was the first thing I was thinking. <laughs> we're very different people, you and I, creepypasta writer man. I tried calling out for my mother, but there was no answer. I tried to get up and leave, but I couldn't. I was unable to control myself. I was stuck. Like I was controlled by a puppet master in a sick play. I tried to scream once more, but I couldn't even manage to do that. I was stuck there, eyes fixed on the screen, and Mega Man had his fallen enemy's lifeless eyes staring back at me. After a while, the screen stopped flashing and the image stayed on the screen. I was wondering what my mother was. Surely she would have heard my first cry for help and came down. However, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't leave or scream. All I could do was look. Text appeared on the screen. The text read, the more defeat, the more bloodshed. After I finished reading the text, I noticed his devilish smirk turned to a perfect grin, as if he was both laughing at his murdered foes, or at my, indi at my indescribable fear. The game started up once more. Even without the cartridge inside, I was fighting another boss. I couldn't do it. I couldn't take it. I tried as hard as I could to break free from the curse that compelled me to the game, but wouldn't let me out of its clutches. Finally, after nearly 10 minutes of struggling, I was able to break free of my affliction. I had done it. I ran over to the door. I was home free in the second, back with my mother where I was safe. However, as I went to turn the knob, an incredibly loud sound emitted from the TV. I glanced over at the screen, and the screen read, I wouldn't do that. What's he gonna do? I disregarded the text and went to go turn the knob. As I did, I felt a sharp pain in my chest. The pain grew harder and harder and harder until it brought me to my knees. I just needed to leave. I brought my hand up once more and grabbed the knob. Soon everything just went black. All I, I can remember is the pain in my chest getting worse by the second and the words, I wouldn't do that, playing over and over in my head. And that's where the story ends. Holy shit, an evolution at a level that I can actually love it. That's it, chat. That was the story. So he died in the in the sealed room. But he wrote this creepy pasta. How did he do it? So many answers. I'm not blowing all of my fucking toxins because you clicked encore, you bitch. Why did Mega Man do that? 
I don't understand why Mega Man did that. Isn't that kind of a shitty thing to do? He killed his enemies. Mega Man doesn't kill. Well, I mean, he kind of does, but that's okay because they're like they're robots. They go they go pew, and he absorbs their energy, and he and they just get built back. Not like they have a, have a soul or anything, right? I don't, know. I don't really know what's going on with that game. I don't know to begin with, uh, uh, stop fucking encoring me and making me lose my toxics. Gotta go through so goddamn many of them. Well, chat, what do you think? I would give that a resounding two out of ten. Because it was about Mega Man 2. <laughs> oh, great. Weird Twilight music. I wish they didn't have Encore. Okay. Power up. Complete. My favorite creepypastas are the ones where the writer dies at the end of the story because there's all kinds of questions I have when the writer dies at the end of the story. Like, who wrote the story if the guy who this is happening to is dead? Now, sometimes they have it set up in, like, the Ronald McDonald Slaughterhouse. That one, that one was set up in a way where it's like, oh, okay, he wrote it. And, and, and you know, he followed, he followed the point up and it's like, it's like that. But even then, it's still like... I don't think you can do that. What was the one? I think it was the. Um, it wasn't the Mario one. No, it was the ze it was the zero it was the zero chances one. Zero gravity, zero chances. Where a motherfucker died, cause zero gravity, he had no oxygen. He died, and while he was dying, he wrote this. Uh, <laughs> he wrote his experience dying. That was very uh, that was a very good story. True Fast have you generally enjoyed so far? Uh, the Treasure Island one, Abandoned by Disney, that one was actually very good. I, I like that one. Uh, I think there was another one I read that I thought was actually quite, like, cool, but not, like, super amazing, but still neat. But for the most part, they're all schlock, and that's perfectly fine with me. Had no chance. There's not a lot of tall creepypastas, if you're wondering. We read we read like all we could find on um on Halloween for a special. Maybe there's more now. Oh right, chat, I just remembered. We were supposed to read the true story of Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh man. Is this even a creepypasta? This isn't a creepypasta chat. This is like some fake Wikipedia article. I feel like I've been let down. Yeah, the Godzilla uh, NES one is good. Up until it gets weird at the end. That one did a very good job with showing imagery. That one and Ben Drown. Ben Drown is a classic. And a big reason why Ben kind of works is because it provided gameplay footage to the events, so... It felt, you know, it was more compelling to watch it play out than just read it. And that's kind of how, uh, the visual storytelling element goes a long way for, uh, for creepypastas. Because scene is believing, right? So you need to make a pretty convincing image. And the thing about the Godzilla NES creepypasta is that all the images provided are actually pretty, like, they're pretty compelling. They're pretty in line with the the aesthetic of the game, even if it's slight like the that creature is out of place itself. But yeah, then it gets weird. It does get weird. Alright, I have a tired toe. Fantastic. A new set has been completed. And now we're gonna fly away. What I really liked about Abandoned by Disney was just the way it set everything up. Except the giant snake, the 80-foot snake. That was definitely silly, but it's okay, because it, it was a moment's notice. I didn't read Suicide Mouse. I don't know if that one's good, and I'm willing to bet bottom dollar that it's not. Okay. 
Hold on. I think I'm gonna... Let me evolve these two right now, because they're, they're bothering me. What star do they do? And I need to attack Sunny. Okay. Okay, uh... What the fuck are these things? Dusk? Okay, so the Dusk one works. So it's the Dusk and the Dawn Shard, I assume. That evolve Kadama into Mimi-chan and Rukuto. And then I need the Attack Shard for Sunny. To make Attack Sunny. I'll have to find a way to grind money. But it'll be nice to be done with uh, level conditions, I think. Utaka is definitely a high enough level to grind. Alright, Kadama 1. Rukoto. Okay. And Solar Shard. Oh, it's not the Solar Shard. Which one is it? Shiny Shard? It is the Shiny Shard. Okay. Mimi-chan. Okay. And then the Attack Shard. It's up here somewhere. Defense Shard. No. Power Shard. Sunny Milk. Attack Sunny. She learns Sunny Day. Alright, well that takes care of those three. So that'll be less annoying going through the decks. A weird evolution. Steal fire. Hmm, stealing UFOs on the west of Bale Stone Sound is a way to get money. Uh, I should bring my Hatate with focus for that. And just use Thief. That'd be a good way to get money. Itty bitty Jung. Okay, let's see. I forgot to put this to your way. Deposit. Boing. Spoingo boingo music. All right, let's see. Futo, Somioi, Quakama, Star. Mioi, Quakama, Star. Quakama. Mm. Star, no, <laughs> not star. Um, the fuck is star? Did I get cakey? I actually don't remember. There you are, You're like a first route mon. Et six six six. Oh, that's gonna be fantastic. Hold on. Uh. Who was I looking for again? Quakuma, Star, and Mioi. Mioi I got from Eterna, so she should be somewhere with the forest Pokemon. Where the fuck is she? No, she should be back here based on order. There she is. Okay. Alright. Take a look. Star. Defense Wagasaki. Okay. Sakuya. And real shimmy. Okay. No, 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 no. Sakuya and shimmy. So, I had Sakuya here. I don't remember where I put Shimmy, but I did go and catch the Shibi form. Uh, just look for the C, look for the C, look for the C, look for the C. Where is she? I don't see Shimmy. 
Oh, my putter. Hmm? Where did I put you? Oh, there you are. I put you in here for some reason. All right. Here we go again. Cool. Three hundred and twenty-nine. What do I get when I complete the Pokedex, do you think? Do you think I get a standing ovation? Do you think I get five dollars? Do you think I get a coupon? At my local McDonald's? What do I get for this? Hmm. I wonder. What do I get? What's my purpose? What do I obtain? You obtain endless options. I obtain sadness. Alright, bring Kutaka's PP up. Hmm. You know how much it costs to buy anything at McDonald's? Too much. This guy got Mega Man 2 for 20 bucks. You know how much it costs making a Big Mac with fries? Like 14. What the fuck? Mega Man 2 was 20 bucks back then. What's that in real money? Or, I say real money. Current money. That's what I should say. Current money. Joke money. Monopoly fucking money. That's what this is. We're playing with Monopoly money. I'm gonna use these up. So I can move them to the bottom of the bag. For convenience sake. Alright, it's game time. Sakuya. Sakuya. Her name is a lot more fun to say than I originally gave it credit for. All right, you can talk sick, good. And you can talk sick. And you can talk sick. He just switches the attack stat with his defense stat. Why do you, that, that's so random. Why do you have Jekyll's move? <laughs> the fuck? Okay, here we go, gamer time. Okay, chat. Are you ready to read ET666? This is based on ET, the Sega, or the Atari game. Widely regarded as one of the, the worst video game ever created. And almost single-handedly destroying the, the video game industry as a whole. This game has so much crazy history behind it. It's hilarious. To a certain extent. I have double kick, so I can kick her. All right, here we go. Get your popcorn ready. I'm gonna read, you ready? Here, here, here we go. Back when I was very little, my older brother worked for Atari. Oh man, he started with the taboo. Oh, the taboo. What's the C mean? The C stands for Shibi, which essentially just means it's their uh, free evolution form. So when you evolve things in this game, there's different ways to do it. They all evolve by level, but they can also evolve by specialty shards, which change the number letter in front of it. So, for example, A Sakuya would be Attack Sakuya, D Sakuya would be Defense Sakuya, but just regular Sakuya means it's just evolved by level, and they're specialized. So there's a lot of different types of puppets you can use within the same puppet, which is very fascinating. Like, Sakuya can run three different sets, essentially, based on what you change it to. So if you catch one and you're like, I don't really want to catch another one, you can just kind of pick the set that works the best for it. And you can do that in puppet dance performance as well with the style changing. But it's like, there's there's a bit of a difference in, in this one, just in the, really the pose. But the idea is the same if you know anything about that game. Hmm. All right. Magic knife? No thanks. Alright, ready? Here we go. On one Christmas, he brought me E.T. Atari 2600 game. I was very happy because I loved the film and I was excited to play the game based off it. I looked at my Atari 2600 and entered the cartridge. Instead of the cartridge in, it booted up like normal, showing the usual title card at E.T.'s head. 
I pressed start and I shown a cutscene of a spaceship landing and out came E.T. The objective of the game is to collect three pieces of an interplanetary, interplanetary telephone. The pieces can be found scattered randomly through various pits. After a while, I collected all the pieces and moved on to the next level, but this time it was strange. This is my favorite part of every creepypasta. Every fucking creepypasta where the game goes as normal and then something strange always happens or weird or off. Yeah, they always set the tone with those words. That's when things got kind of odd. Very good. <laughs> things were normal until they weren't. Well, I mean, maybe the game is just strange itself. I mean, this guy's never played this game before, but he's talking like he's played this game before. He said it started up like the usual screen, but this is the first time he's supposed to be playing the game, right? Hmm. Alright, where was I? Hmm. When I was booted into the level... Kirby, your music is so loud! I tried to get out of the area to find some pits, but it wouldn't let me. I saw that there was a pit already there, so I went into it, and the game froze as soon as I did. I was back on the title screen, but it was different now. E.T.'s color was inverted, and his eyes were black, with blood coming out of them. Instead of saying copyright 1982, it said copyright 666 Atari, and it was very glitched up. I pressed start once again, and the spaceship landing cutscene played once again. E.T. was the same as he appeared on the title screen. This time I could move somewhere else. I moved along, but there were no pits whatsoever. But then I came across something. But it was not a pit. It was Elliot. With a knife in his stomach. Lying in a pool of his own blood. His skin was very pale. And he had X's for eyes. You know, in the Atari 2600 graphics of the E.T. game. A text box appeared saying, You're too late, E.T. He's already dead. I killed him. I was a bit disturbed. The scientist, one of the enemies in the game, went up to E.T. and took him away like usual. But as soon as he did, the game restarted and went back to the title screen. Only E.T.'s head was now a skull. And the words E.T. were now R.I.P. <laughs> Rip, bozo. I tried to press start, but all it did was make a buzzing noise. It cut to a black screen with red text that said, He was first. You're next. The game then crashed. I attempted to start the game again, but it would always cut the same black screen with that message. I asked my brother about it, but he never remembered giving me the game and handing me the E.T. game. I wasn't... I went back to my room and the other one I had played was gone. I mean, like, really gone. Now it's present day and I'm typing this. I feel heavy breathing on my neck and I heard a voice say hello. I turn around and saw him. It was the scientist. <gasps> oh God. So right when he finished typing, he literally turned around. He went back to his keyboard. He, I, I turned around, like he turned around. I turned around and saw him. It was the scientist. End story. <laughs> Motherfucker had time to type that out right in that moment. The scientist from the E.T. game found him. Imagine what that would look like in real life. If just like this absolute mass of blockiness just came to your room and was like, Hello. What would you do? It would depend on the character, of course. If it was some, if it was a guy from E.T., I would, you know, I wouldn't be very happy about that. I would be quite upset. Man haunted by E.T. for his whole life. Star, you are level 2. You know that, champ? What are you doing at level 2? Alright. Yeah, what happened to the scientist? What, where did he go? He just, he, said, he just said hello, and then the guy turned around and saw the scientist, and the story ends. What happened? Did he die? Did he get R.I.P.'d? E.T.? E.P.T.R.E.P.? Huh? Why did the scientist kill Eddie, or whatever his name was? I didn't- I didn't watch the movie. In case that wasn't obvious. Uh... So chat, what do you think? I give that one a resounding 1 out of 10. And the only reason I give it a 1 is because it made me laugh. So, that's, you know... If it, it'd be a 0, it was just boring. But it made me laugh, so I'll get to give it a 1. Hmm... 
Give up on reflect. So, star should evolve fast, right? <laughs> Fucking weird ass creature. Why is he so gross looking, man? Why does he look like that? God damn. Imagine if a real alien saw that. They're like, this is what we thought you guys looked like back in the day. That's like... That's like straight alien racism. That's what that is. Oh, God. As if I really look like this. But what if, you know, if there's all kinds of aliens in the universe, maybe there is an ET out there. So can you really say that? What was our idea of aliens, these gross fucking protruding finger glowing freaks? Well, what was that about? What was that all about? This one poggy for sure. Alright. I cannot read what that says. It's just Pokemon X. Right? Okay, I like the name of that one. It's gotta be good. I have a real star now. Hmm, would you only be scared of creepypastas? That is a genuinely awful great question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is she afraid of ghost stories? I assume she's afraid of ghost stories, and creepypastas are ghost stories, so she'd probably be scared to an extent because she would actually kind of believe them to a certain uh, degree. But I feel like if you tell her enough of them, she'd probably just... she just think they're stupid. Hmm. You're almost grown up. You're almost not that small anymore. You gotta give her credit. She, she, grew, she grew ten sizes that day. In that case battle. That was a really good case. It wasn't exactly subtle, but I actually really appreciated how, as it progressed, it did reach a point where Sage started referring to Yomu properly without with the without the condescending tone. Like you could tell she started to respect uh, Yomu's abilities as the conversation went on. Again, I really like that Seija. That Seija is one of my favorite Sages I think I've ever seen in any Toho-related work, and I'm very curious to see how that game finishes. Hmm. Like I said, it's not exactly subtle, but, like, I still appreciate the touch, and she she sticks that way. Never once does she refer to Yomu in that condescending tone again afterwards. But it would have been funny if she said to call her Big Yomu. <laughs> She's leveled up. Okay, chat. We're gonna read a story. It's called, It's Just Pokemon X. Right? Here we go. Man, Yobo's such a fun character. She's so versatile. She's so malleable. That's why she's so popular. A while ago, I, I being a big fan of the Pokemon franchise, went to a Twitch chat and complained about the new games. I didn't- yeah, he didn't say that. I put- I put words in his mouth. I put words in his mouth, I admit. I've made, I've made a grievous error. I wa uh, as a big fan of the Pokemon franchise, I wanted the game Pokemon X for the Nintendo 3DS. I had neither of those, so I decided to look on eBay. This was fine. <laughs> I scrolled down and the result half hardly seen that the Pokemon X bundle with the 3DS was a lot more money than I assumed it to be. A lot. I had hoped for around 100 pounds. I was wrong. They're all around 200 even more. That's, wow. I was beginning to lose hope, but yet there was one. The game I wanted with the console I wanted, but it was only 50 pounds. I immediately showed my parents and they agreed they would be great for a birthday present. As if my birthday was two days later, I was happily pleased with this. Two day delivery order on a $50 3DS and game? Brother, you know you're getting a piece of cardboard, right? You're getting a piece of cardboard and a flash card. <laughs> like, you're not getting what you think you're getting. It's not gonna happen. That's the fun part about Yomu, is Yomu can be a very serious swordswoman and do all kinds of cool stuff, but then I can pinch her cheeks and she'll go, please stop. So like, you can, that's literally the same character. That's the best part about her. You don't have to make anything up. You can do both of those things and you can, and anyone looking at that will just be like, yeah, that's Yomu. That's Yomu. That's 100% Yomu. It's amazing. That's what I mean. She's so malleable. You can do anything with her. There's no role she can't fit in. All right, where am I? The next day, Sunday, I woke up and checked my email from the seller. I was curious. To the unfortunate buyer, I cannot express my regret for your purchase. 
I just had to get rid of the cartridge. It was getting to be too much for me to have. Everything about it is wrong, but one thing is the worst. I wish you the best of luck. Honestly, I do. But be careful, and no matter what you do, do not enter the Hall of Fame. Why are you selling it for money, then, if you just want to get rid of it, you fuckhead? You greedy asshole. Sure, this thing is, like, destroying my life, but, you know, I, I gotta make a profit off it. I'm not... What do you think this is? Fucking idiot. I admit I was creeped out, but I assumed it was simply a troll to discourage my completion of the game. I ignored it the first part, and for my fear my parents would decide not to buy from me. Henceforth, I decided to simply delete the email. E the e e email. What do you mean, henceforth? What do you mean, henceforth? Does henceforth work in this context, chat? I thought henceforth mean, like, now until, like, for going forward. So henceforth deleting of email means he deletes every email that ever comes after, right? Is that, like, am I reading that right? Like, it doesn't, isn't that what henceforth I I implies? Or am I, am I dumb? Hmm. This man, this man got McDonald's money with that haunted cart. But we're gonna see, don't worry, we're gonna find out what exactly is going on in this cart that made him ha really have to get rid of it and how dangerous it is and why he fucking charged $50 for a dumbass. Alright, where are we? Hmm. I wish I had not for now. I barely have any evidence besides my own memory, which is in itself fading. Once more, I woke up my birthday on Monday. I sighed out of bed, shrugged on my uniform, and enthusiastically walked to school. When inside, I walked into my forum room and to my best friend. I looked at him, and he had bought the game a while before me, but hadn't spoiled it, as I had asked from him. What a nice friend. I told him that I was going to get it soon, and he smiled to me. We conversed about Pokemon for most of the day. That's a good friend you had there. At the end of the day, I waved goodbye to my friends and I started to walk home. When I entered my home, I took a step, finding one present I had asked for, plus a few more. I stared at them for a moment before I'm wrapping my 3DS. The rest of the presents followed suit, being ripped open and stared at. I decided to try Pokemon X on my new console last, as it was the best. The saying had always seemed to stick with me. However, when I put in the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, the screen only came up with an error. Cartridge error, please insert Pokemon X. What? This confused me. The 3DS console was not meant to do this. Was it? It surely didn't seem so to me. I checked on Google. Nobody seemed to have experienced this, except one. It was on a forum. I clicked on it and began to read. Uh-oh. I recently received a copy of Pokemon X along with a 3DS, and I was wondering if anybody experienced the same problem as me. I got other games with it, and every game I tried would not work. I only wanted to accept Pokemon- It only wanted to accept Pokemon X. This resulted in me putting in the cartridge as you would expect, but when I did, it didn't boot up straight away. Instead, writing appeared on the screen. Jonathan blacked out. He protected himself upon awakening and rushed home in Leeds to avoid further harm. It took me a moment to register upon looking at the screen, how it knew my name and location. Hmm? I hadn't entered it yet into the cartridge of the console, although it may have been connected to the internet to find a location. This guy just doxed himself. <laughs> this guy just doxed himself on a help forum. Good job. Uh, although I may have connected the internet to find a location, the way it knew my name still baffled me. Nonetheless, I continued to play in the game, assuming to be a test of some sort. The name could have been a lucky guess, although after the screen finally subsided, a save file was already present, named. Hello, with a three. I, of course, saw it as a weird name, yet I decided to play. This is still the guy on the forum, right? Yeah, I think it is. I always enjoyed continuing old games for some reason. I played, like, chat, the text italicized when he said, uh, when he said he began to read the forum post, and it's still italicized, so I think this is all the forum. You not miss, you stupid bastard. I, of course, saw it as a weird name, yet I decided to play. I always continued enjoying old games for some reason. I played with my starter seemed to have been picked. Old Games 2013. It was a Rhyhorn instead of the original Pokemon options there were. I figured it could have been some sort of hack. I was only one... It was only one Pokemon, and it was pretty strong. Anyway, it tore through the first few gyms with ease. It tore through the first few gyms with ease. Now, it's not that I don't believe him, but... The first few gyms is bug, rock, and fighting. So, 
He definitely didn't tear through that third gym. I'll tell you that. But also, the distance between gym 1 and gym 2 is astronomical. So, like, this guy had to have been playing for a while. <coughs> Surely, right? Oh, God. Okay. Hmm. Where am I? No problems. There were a few changes, though. Once I had beaten Viola, she had a different speech. You are, you have not quit yet. This is an achievement with a 7. And instead of the roller skates usually received, they were ice skates. Weird. I shut my game down for the night after the first three gyms. You did not beat... You didn't beat Karina with a Rhyhorn. Fuck you. I got a little bit too far from my liking. As I got into bed, I heard a loud banging noise. I ignored it and slept. Upon awakening, I realized my new console was on the ground. I turned it on and booted the game once more. See, the name had changed to Ah, uh, One Can See You with a zero. My eyes started to hurt just looking at the screen, so I turned away and turned the 3DS off. I haven't played it in a while. More next page. There were more pages. I decided not to read them just yet, and that instead I would play the game. Great. I flicked on the switch. And there was a save file, the new one from the comment I had seen. I can see you. I clicked the profile and I was... Hmm? And I was in the main home as though the game had restarted. It hadn't, but the 8th gym badge hadn't been achieved yet. I looked at the Pokemon. Uh, it had the same Rhyhorn as well as a Talonflame. That was it. What a shit team. How did he manage... To beat so many gyms. After a moment of scanning the screen, I noticed the Rhyhorn had 495 levels. That explained a lot. Yeah, I bet. What do you mean 495 levels? Ex fucking excuse me? Huh? You can't get a Pokemon that high. This guy's never played Pokemon in his life. Alright. As I watched my little sprite. What do you mean little sprite? What do you mean? Playing Pokemon X on a 3DS. What do you mean, little sprite? Oh, please, if you're gonna run a creepy pasta, actually play the fucking source material. Please, I beg you. All right, uh, back to the back to the story. Uh, and fly to Snowbell Gem. I noticed just my car in the corner of my screen. Like the tip of a Rhyhorn's horn. As I entered the gym, I noticed it was inflamed. No puzzle, just walk up to the gym leader amidst the melting hell that would have been the ice gym. Wolfric sent out his Obama Snow and the Rhyhorn rock blasted it with a KO. As with a cryogonal, followed by the Avalog. Each fainted. All of a sudden, instead of Wolfric's normal speech, it said Rhyhorn wants to impale. Upon pressing A, his model disappeared. This left me speechless for a, a while. It was a while though. Not, not too long. You know, we got over it. These things happen. I was unsure what to think. The small icon I'd seen was now slightly bloodied. Oh, okay. And I advanced towards Victory Road after every challenger I fought. Rhyhorn wants to impale came up. I want. I walked. <laughs> I walked through Victory Road slowly as I near the end. A pop up appeared. It said Rhyhorn's bloodlust was satisfied. Why well, does he want to fucking impale everyone, dude? This guy's playing 2D. 2D Pokemon X. Man, it's insane. I want to play this game, man. I'm a fucking bloodthirsty Rhyhorn. After that, everything seemed normal for a short while. The battles were no different to ones in a normal game, and I advanced to the last part of Victory Road legitimately. Except the level difference, of course. I advanced to the Elite Four, it was time to go off for the night once more. Uh. I saved an exit of going to sleep. In my bed, I heard a bang. Just like it was the post that the guy had made, and I want, and I want to sleep. I woke up on... The next day, my 3DS on the bedroom floor, as I'd expected. I turned it on and opened up Pokemon X. The icon of the horn had lost all signs of blood. Rhyhorn needs more blood! I shuddered, walking into each chamber, but the E4s looked different to what I had seen. Seabold was a dark-skinned, bald man, killed by Rhyhorn's horn. Malva was the same sort of person, I thought, but she seemed a younger version, killed once more. Wickstrom was more of a younger person, looking about 12. He was gone too. But once Drasm was defeated, her text box was different. Before she was impaled, 
It said, thank you for ending the nightmare. By now I had seen weird things from this a lot. I ignored it and walked out into the champion's chamber. Champion Jonathan would like to battle. John Champion came onto my screen. I didn't realize what I had just seen, and so I battled it and beat it. I saved just before the Hall of Fame to see what would walk. You can't, you can't do that. You can't do that. You've never, ever, ever been able to save after the fight and before the Hall of Fame. This guy's never played Pokemon in his fucking life, and it becomes a brazenly apparent with each passing sentence. I hate this guy. I hate him. Alright. I saved just before the Hall of Fame to see what the walkthrough post of this weird version said. I satiated my Rhyhorn's bloodlust and we finished the Elite Four and Champion. I saved and will go to the Hall of Fame soon. Jonathan20490. That's when I saw it. Jonathan20490, the champion's name. Diantha's replacement. Could it be that everyone in the Hall of Fame was inducted into the game more literally than I thought? I was terrified. I shut down my 3DS and I haven't touched it since. Okay, so the writer... The writer did not go in the Hall of Fame, so he could not be slurp shucked into his copy of Pokemon X, where the bloody Rhyhorn impales people for some reason. I don't... I don't really know why. I am calm. I'm extremely calm. Do I sound agitated? Do I sound like I'm having a problem? I sound pretty relaxed, I think. Very chill moment here. Uh, chat, there's another one in my face. There's a fucking another one. I found another one! Two in one stream! Who is this guy? Okay. Stay in the ball. Stay in the ball. Stay in the ball. I didn't need to catch it, but I have this uh, desire to catch every single shiny I ever run into because I feel like if I don't, I failed. I've never failed a shiny capture outside of that skitty at Emerald Kaizo when I didn't have Pokeballs. <laughs> that was the only time in my life I've ever not caught a shiny I've run into, believe it or not. I always come prepared. Anyway, chat, that was, um, I'm gonna give that one a riveting 0 out of 10, because I didn't laugh, and the amount of information that was just blatantly incorrect was frustrating. Hmm. This is the reason I have Pokemon Y instead. Okay. This is kind of interesting, I guess. Not that great, though. Was there any significance to Rhyhorn being the starter Pokemon, or was it just a red hair? Because Rhyhorn's evolved form Rhydon was the first Pokemon programmed in the original games. Was this trying to allude to that tidbit of info? I just assumed it was because your character's mother is a Rhyhorn rider. But what do I know? I'm trying to find reasons for things that don't, don't exist. Alright. Aside from that, this whole curse game somehow kills the previous owner trope turned into a story, and that's pretty cliche for a game pasta. Along with the whole previous uh, player is somehow an important, significant character thing. This needs a lot of work, gratuitous blood and gore. Somehow, uh, plus the aforementioned cliches doesn't equal an effective pasta in this case. I'm sorry, but you need to do a bit more work on this for it to be truly good, in my opinion. Perhaps you could elaborate a bit more on what happened to Jonathan before he put the cursed X game card up for sale. Or explain why this game card was cursed to begin with. 6 out of 10, slightly above average, still needs work. Yeah, we get it. Games sold on eBay will kill you or traumatize you. But seriously, the community needs more originality. Hmm. Okay. Give up on Swifty. Hmm. They've never played the game. The writer would never know that if they hadn't played. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it, man. I don't understand. Also, look at me, always stupid hat. It's like falling off. What a dumb character. Fuck you. 
Wouldn't it be funny if I read Lotus Eaters and Mioi becomes one of my favorite characters? I genuinely think that's impossible though because I don't know anything about her at all. And from what I did see, she was just kind of a creep. She, she'd feed people drinks and then fucking watch them hallucinate. And like, I don't know, she gets off to it or something. And that's all she did. But then she was, you know, she was a right sweetheart who served people food. Yeah, whatever, bitch. I got a bird that does that better. Mioi, Misty, ya. Get out of here. Who are you? Just because your chest is bigger doesn't mean anything. And hell, depending on the artist, well, we can fight that battle. That's a battle all Misty can win sometimes, maybe. Anyway, I am not angry. I am very zen. Very zen. Smile. And give me that fake ass smile. Yee yee ass smile. My opinion of Mioi is, is, is uh, not negative, by the way. It, it, it's it's quite literally just flat. I don't know anything about the character at all. And her design is... It, it's it's fine. I, I liked her better when I thought she was a whale. Like, I saw her hat, and I decided she was a whale. She's not even a fucking whale. That was the worst part of her character. Why even wear a whale hat? Be a whale at that point. Should it be the next Wanderer, though? That could be fun. Yeah, that's true. But every character is going to be the new Wanderer, including Yuma. And you know Yuma is going to be great because Yuma. Hmm. Uh, can I have, uh, can I have Lunar, uh, Miko Rabbit again? I love Miko Rabbit. Miko Rabbit was one of my favorite characters in the entirety of Lotus Lambert R. And that's not even a joke. That character is fucking great. It's just an extremely overworked, underpaid and tired Lunarian rabbit in a costume doing her job. But every now and again, the facade falls off. Say I'm cuter, I'll cut you. Like, whoa, damn! Chill, 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 chill. <laughs> oh, that was a fast evolution. Okay, very good. Very good. We're making great strides in the field of progress here today. Hmm. I hear that a lot. I hear I hear about how Mioi is not very relevant in her own in her own story. But again, I've never actually read Lotus Eaters past the first couple chapters, so I don't really know if that's an exaggeration or she actually just takes a back seat to the other people who show up in the bar. Streamer, that's your that's your moment to, this is your moment to talk about the character you don't like. You know the one, the one you talk about all the time. It is chat member, but I'm refraining from that. I'm refraining from inserting my biases here because that's not the point of the conversation today. It's not about how much I dislike her like a character. I genuinely don't know how much of an impact she has in her own story at the moment. Hmm. Okay. Alright. Here we go. Who's next? Uh, wait, what? All oh, right. Okay, we're going down. Um, Sakuya story. Oh, I have to catch Genji, don't I? Wait. Oh. Okay. Well, I'll get him later. But I need story. Ichiden. Oh, I don't have Miko. Rika. Okay. You're in the cave, right? Yeah, okay. Hold on, let's go get uh let's go get Miko real quick. Uh you have cut, which actually means it's great that you're immediately accessible there. Let's go get that. I'll go find Genji too while I'm at it. Is Genji just a rare encounter on that route? It makes sense because there's other PC98 characters on that route, but I never found them. Uh, Miko, Miko first. These are going to be rare encounters, so brace yourself, chat. He's just got a bit of characterization and other news. He's a surf encounter, okay. Uh -uh. Is there still... How many chapters have come out? I, I need to catch up on, uh, on Cheating Detective. I'm pretty sure there's only one chapter I have to catch up on, though. Just one. The last chapter I read was the one where uh, Reimu made the big reveal of who Mioi, or not Mioi, uh, Mima Deguchi was, and I haven't seen anything past it. 
Yeah, I need to see the I need to see the new chapter. I'll check it out eventually. It's not gonna take that long to read, but I'll just find some time for it. It might be worth it just oh, shit. It's kind of it might be worth to just wait for the whole thing to finish and do and blast it, but there's going to be spoilers everywhere. So I, I might as well read it as it comes out at this point because it's the final arc. I'll stay informed on that regard. I think CDS is fun to some extent. It's kind of fun to see like uh, returning characters and stuff. But the actual plot of CDS is boring because it's always the same formula. So M Mia Deguchi is not an interesting character at all. There's like we don't know anything about what she like what she's doing. I guess now we do, or why she's doing it. But for the most part, every single chapter plays out in a similar format, and it's kind of tedious. But I just like seeing how they handle some of the other uh, other character interactions. Like, let's me go. Nice. I like uh, a tower of Saint. Able to understand com ten conversations at once. <laughs> what is it? I like the fight that uh, they had, like Biakrid and Show had with Flandre. I thought that was great. That was fantastic. Because fucking Biakrin walks over to Flandre and is like, here, let me help you up. And then fucking picks her up and tosses her <laughs> in the roof. And I was just like, whoa. Damn. You go. Biakrin got no fucking chill when you piss her off. There's Genji. Alright, get in the ball. Oh, perfect. Try to bless with flight. Assisting Rainbow when traveling against Sohi before his spiritual power matured. He can fly. All right. Oh, the music ended, chat. We did it. Hmm. Hmm. Good music. Does anyone remember what we needed? We needed Miko and Story. I remember that for sure. Where's Story? Okay. Defense Wagasaki. I'll get that real quick. Uh, who else was it? Miko, there's Ichiden. Okay. Ichiden and Rika. Okay, let me see. Uh, do you get Unzan the same way in this game? Do you need an open slot for him? Is that a thing in this game? Is he like Shininja? Or is that... Is that a no? Should probably... Make sure on that. I already forgot who I was looking for. Uh, shit. Unzan is not a puppet. Okay. I forgot who I was looking for. Oh fuck. Yeah, right, Rika, right there. Thank you. Okay, there's Rika. And now Ichiden. Ichi, 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 Ichi. Ichi, 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 Ichi. There you are. Da dong, dong, da dong. Alright, we're gonna pop a defense shard. And we'll see what. That's the power shard. Where are you? Where are you? The D1, the blue heart, the blue heart, the blue heart. There it is. They all have defense forms, huh? 
Wakomachi. Oh, right. I forgot I named her that. She's red. And blue. <laughs> Wakomachi. Looks good. Alright, it's another one for the decks. And back to... Technical Atate and Sara. Oh, I have green. I have icky green Sara. Yeah! Icky green Sara. Jalota Reek is just a fucking tank. There's no reason for it. It just is. It simply is. Poog. That word's great. Sometimes I catch myself thinking the word poggies. To myself. I don't say it out loud, but I just I just think that word every now and again in my head. This is my uh this is my issue, my major malfunction. Alright. We're heading back up the mountain. Oh man, how I cannot wait to never have to come back up this fucking mountain, dude. Okay. Oh, I took. Whoa, it's Rika! Whoa! Wait a minute. Time saved! <laughs> time saved! Time saved! Hold still, you devil. What are the odds? Why do I have five Ultra Balls? I got it. Created many monsters and machines attempting to destroy Reimu, but the reason for doing so is unknown. Yeah, why'd you fucking do that? Okay, well, first things first. Who can learn Toxic? None of you. Great. Alright. No problem. What are the odds, man? Alright, let's start with Miko. It's gonna take the longest. Save the game. Save the game. Chat. Where's our next pasta? Hmm? Where is it? Don't tell me we're... Don't tell me we're stuffed. There's always more garbage to be found. You got beat up, huh? Utaka's really gonna hit level 100 from this. That's crazy. It's gonna be the big meat. The big meat in town. Is that... Is that really a creepypasta? A Zelda 64 beta? Normal porn for normal people. Chat, what about that one? What about that one? Okay. Alright. Let's read it. Hmm. That one is no good. What's wrong with it? I, I'm pretty sure it came up before and we didn't click it. It's got a picture of a gorilla on it. Hmm. Some tells me it's not for normal people. It's on the popular section though. It's got a gorilla, man. It's got a gorilla. I like gorillas. Gorillas are cool. Alright, well, I'm gonna read Zelda 64 beta right now. Okay? Here we go. When I was a child, one of my favorite games was Legend of Zelda Ocarina at a time. Anyone who's played it can probably figure out why. Huh, even if they don't particularly find it their favorite. Naturally, it's a very popular game. It spawned a lot of rumors and legends. Especially back in the day when communication through the internet wasn't as common. Most of these legends are false, but sometimes a surprising amount of truth can be found in them. A while ago, I read an article about early versions of Zelda 3D, as it was called in development, and apparently these early versions were incredibly difficult, from, different from the released versions. It was modeled after the original Legend of Zelda, rather, A Link to the Past, and was such that a lot more free-roaming and adventurous than the one we got. At that time, it sounded awesome, and I even found myself wondering why they abandoned the project. 
I concluded it was probably due to the technical requirements such a feat. Still, one thing that especially stuck with me was their pictures. Some were nondescript, nothing special. But one showed a large, expansive desert environment. There was a palm tree, a small oasis near a much more primitive-looking link. As well as some enemies past that, however, it was just sand stretching to the horizon. Thoughts of what might lay beyond the desert seemed to stick to the images in my mind. Hmm. After that, we skipped several years. Okay. The skip, uh, the article is only a vague recollection. Nothing important. I was hanging out at a local game shop with one of my friends. He's telling me about his day and tells me how some guy came to sell his missing son's old video games. He showed me them and they were all normal games. A few Wii games, a few GameCube games, a lot of 64 games. So the one that, only one that really caught my eye was a red cartridge with no label except a piece of tape with the word ZELDA? Question mark, question mark, written over it in marker. Naturally, that just got me curious. My friend didn't share my curiosity, but he didn't think he could sell the game and just let me take it home for free and indulge myself. Naturally, I did. Oh yeah, we're indulging ourselves on Zelda tonight. The moment the game started, I realized it wasn't the Zelda I was used to. The title screen was nothing but a nondescript The Legend of Zelda. No subtitles, no fancy font, no music, just those words in black bordered lettering. The background wasn't from OOT or MM either. It was an overhead view of what could only be called the ancient ruins. It looked very sinister and grotesque, similar to something from Majora's Mask, only without any hint of the mystical atmosphere that accompanied Zelda any Zelda game. It was simply unnerving. Still, it didn't stop my curiosity. It only kept me going. As soon as I press start, the game begins. It skips over any file screen and dumps a blocky-looking link into an empty black environment. And when I say black, I mean black. There was nothing separating ground and sky, just blackness. The only thing that let me notice the game would even work was the temple in the distance. Similar to the one in the opening. Hmm. Uh. What was I? Moving still seemed to work fine, suggesting that something probably glitched with the textures of the ground and sky. Still, it seems strange that nothing happened to any other textures. Entering the temple was my only choice, so I took it. One thing that is worth mentioning is that the game started with no music, just deathly silence. However, the closer you came to the temple, the more music was available to hear. Well, it wasn't really music. It sounded like moaning, similar to the re-deads in OOT, but more tinny and badly recorded. Every once in a while, some sobs could be heard, but they were quickly stifled. Hmm. Huh. Entering the temple made everything seem more like a Zelda game, but something caught my eye. Rather than the textures being worse than that OOT, they were better. There were more detail in everything, but it was all dingy and rotten looking. Extra polygons only started to make things look more grotesque. The random blood splatters didn't help anything either. It didn't take long for me to realize that the entire dungeon could be hardly be called Zelda-like. Puzzles usually only consisted of pulling a lever or pressing a switch. In fact, there weren't even any sliding blocks. There were no enemies either, but the blood splatters on the wall soon served as a warning of booby traps. Some became inescapable and simply send you back into the darkness again. Others are escapable, but still extremely creepy and depressing. The dungeon was riddled with the low poly remains of dead adventurers, and sometimes they even had items on them. The items could be picked up, but the inventory screen seemed unfinished. And the games only auto-equipped the first three items picked up since there was no accessible inventory screen. After several gruesome deaths and retries, I find my way to a door marked with a scratched on eye. Some of the ones in the lens of truth and various other objects. Entering the door revealed a boss battle. The music by this point had changed, and I only realized it by the last room. The moaning had never looped once, but still seemed to change according to the moon. A discordant violin melody started playing, but the rest of the sound remained nothing. This. Nothing but moans, sobs, yells, and weird scratching. It was never enough to rise past the level of background noise, but it still remained unnerving, almost as if it wasn't music at all. But monsters that were wandering somewhere in the temple. When I said entering the room revealed a boss battle, I was not entirely honest. Why are you lying to me? It could only be called a boss battle by the most generous standards. It featured an empty room with the same textures on the walls as the rest of the temple. The only out of place aspect was a giant face on the other side of the room colored as gray as the walls surrounding it. Huh. 
Its skin seemed stretched over its head and lined with the wall, so it looked as if the wall was growing a face. Moss seemed to be growing over its closed eyes, and cracks were apparent everywhere on it. Still, the door I came in was locked, and the only thing I had to do was approach. I did so carefully, making sure nothing was waiting for a surprise attack. I went up to the point where I was nearly in contact with the face. Nothing. It was still there with its sunken eyes and cracked lips. I attacked it with my sword. The sword went through and it made an incredibly vulgar, flesh-ripping sound. But nothing happened. It remained there. I attacked some more and still some more. Until eventually the music stopped. Soon the cacophony of violins music became even louder and the moans started up even stronger. And then something happened. In one movement, its eyes opened, staring at me dry, soulless eyeballs. And then, nothing. The music was still louder, but I continued to attack the face with no recurrent reaction, until it simply had enough, ripped to shreds, and fell away in a fire, in typical Zelda fashion, revealing a door. The music had stopped. There were no more moans, screams, anything. I went through the door. What a fool I was! That was only the tutorial! The screen was replaced by a white screen, followed by a moment of extremely loud Brownian noise. What does that even mean? I jumped and shit myself, but it was almost over, over almost instantly. The white screen was replaced by Endless Desert, the one from the image. I was in shock. By that point, I was creeped out enough to turn the game off. Still, the respite didn't last long. I had nightmares of the game. Normal nightmares. Why is the creepiest part the fucking desert you walked into? Nothing weird about them. It was, after all, a pretty creepy game. However, what frightened me the most was something I skimmed over while I played and realized afterward. The game changed each time I started over. When I tried to take the same path to the Lambyrinth, I always ended up lost and confused. By the time I finished, I was relying on instinct. I kept going the next day, stopped only to go to eat, go to the bathroom. When I turned it on, I was still at the desert, even though there was no file screen. At the time, it was night. I walked. Sometimes I would walk for 20 minutes, only to find a half-sucking obelisk. Or in the ruins or look at some village hut. Other times there would be a skull or a few bones, but nothing more notable than that. Other times I would see great expanses of oasis and tropical forests. I found my first enemies here. They were similar to tektites, only with larger bodies, mostly contained their, their large eye. They had thin, long legs that were still attacked by leaping. Only when they hit you, they would pin you to the ground and attack. Soon the sun rose and I continued walking. Sometimes I would find small tombs, almost always similar in style to the first dungeon, only without the moaning and no bosses. What I did find was information. Ruins scribbled onto walls that could be read. The description would always be vague with phrases like, and knowledge shall guide way to the heavens. Oh no, the Bible. Sometimes they would be followed by other comments about writing seemed glitch and unintelligible. It seemed to be a history though. The maps I'd sometimes found confirmed it. I simply explored, and after a while, I learned to let instincts guide my way. Soon, I found the next dungeon, a large pyramid rising out of the desert, upside down. Hey, I've heard this one before. I've heard this one before. Super Mario Odyssey did this. To who did this? To whomst? Where was I? Over it, straight. Up in the sky was another large upside down temple. It was stressed so far I couldn't see the top, but I couldn't keep going. I needed to sleep again. The next day came and I entered the dungeon. It was like all the small tombs I would find, only a bit more perilous. More bottomless pits, chasm spikes, traps, and monsters this time. Long arms that would grab you from out of the wall, like wall masters. Only these simply threw you into traps, killing you, which probably used to be redeads and skeletons. At the end of the dungeon, I found a large spiral staircase. I followed up until, and up and until I reached what seemed to be the top. It took two hours of climbing. Two hours of climbing a video game staircase? Chat, how long does it take to climb the fucking ladder in Metal Gear Solid 3? Does this guy really understand how long two hours is? I don't think he does. I don't think he has any fucking sweet clue. How? You, imagine the processing power required to make a staircase go indefinitely for like two hours. Unless you just loop in the same spot over and over again, and then it opens up a ch like, you know. Unbelievable, dude. I'm getting angry again. Alright, where was I? Hmm. 
I lost I lost my plate. I lost where I was. I lost. I'm lost. I don't know. Where do I go? Where do I go? Where was I? I followed up so we top two hours of climb. Time seemed to fly by. The top was merely a platform with a large ordered arrow pointing off an edge. Since there was nowhere else to go, I jumped. The screen again flashed white and I was in a new area. This went on for the next few weeks. There are many places to visit and at times I could find the borders where one locale met another. I started to name the locations I had been to. But although I started knowing all the places intimately, there never seemed to be an end to the new locations. Sometimes I would go through one door and come out the other side of the world. Places didn't behave constant. Why did I switch back into Tatori? Huh. Sometimes I go through one door, come out the other side of one piece, but it became easier to find my way regardless. Each time I revisited a place, it arranged, it rearranged a different, more navigatable setup for every corner. Though I could see the tower in the distance, I quickly realized that I had not reached the top, only fallen into one of many traps. In fact, I still have not reached the top. In the few times I went about the real world, I could feel that the game was different. It changed itself. It seemed to react to me. It was sure, I was sure that a game like this should not have been able to be created, but then they were creating a free-roaming experience more similar to the original Zelda. What if they succeeded? They created a world one could always roam. They really did create a world I had learned from of many gods in that land. The three goddesses who had created such a perverted physical world. The god he who sees, who declare, decided to cleanse it. I still don't know my own route, but I felt that if I simply follow my instincts, I could find my goal. That's why I'm writing this now. My instincts still tell me where to go, but it's not here. It's not in the game. I have to leave, and I will do it, but before I go, I feel I have to leave this message for someone to find. I should warn you, though, it may be a game, but it knows you are playing. I don't understand what just happened. So from what I can tell, this guy was playing a game, he learned about gods and stuff, and now he's like, he's gonna take a spiritual journey. So this would explain why this guy's son was missing. I guess he played this game and was compelled to walk through real deserts instead of just video game deserts. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Don't you hate when you find a creepypasta with an interesting title, then you start reading it, then being slowly interested on it, and then boom, a cliche. I liked it, don't get me wrong, it needs improvement, a few more pictures would have been nice, but it's pretty good. I give it a 7 out of 10. Great creepypasta, but the end got pretty boring and sounded like something you would read in a Bible or something. Boring. Hmm. Boring, cliched as hell, no actual build-up. My one question is, why are people giving this such high scores? I would give this a 3 out of 10. Not the worst story I've read, but nowhere near the best. Man, everybody's a critic. Hmm. Kind of dumb, but I do think a few pictures would be interesting. P, 3 out of 10. Hmm. Little to no immersion, build up, or actual scares. Cliche is all hell too. I don't know why people are giving this a high score. It's barely higher than a 2 out of 10. Hmm. Good at re read. I've read it to the end Zelda month on my YouTube, but one question. Why is this a creepypasta? Okay. I'm Billy. Uh-huh. How much for the game? Cool. Surprising. F fun read, but the two hours to reach the top kind of killed the realistic flavor to it. I remember climbing upstairs in Final Fantasy VII. That took a few minutes to seem like too much. Yeah, the, when you had to run up the Shinra HQ building. <laughs> it's a great moment. Two hours, I don't think that's realistic to just fly by. No, it's really fucking not. Tough crowd? I don't know. I skipped over the reviews that were being positive, so I was selectively biasing. So, I, I skipped over almost every review that said good story might. And I read every one that said bad story might. And now it sounds like every comment was bad story might. So, yeah, this is how, uh, this is how streamer controls the flow of information. Selective reading. Hmm. Well, the concept was kind of neat, but then it got really weird. But, yeah, I, I don't know. It did, it did devolve in a way that was just kind of stupid. That's all. So that's a little dumb. A little dumb. These dumb things happen all the time. Well, chat, what would you give it? I give it a... I give it a 3 out of 10. Because it really didn't do much. It just, 
just made me confused. And when I read the two hours on the staircase thing, I was immediately done. It's like, I checked out at that point. Ain't no way. Toramaru show. Alright, back on the mountain we go. Alrighty then. Well, chat, we're now approaching 30 minutes until termination. Where do I go? Oh, that reminds me, chat. There's this thing I want to check out. I'll, I'll probably do it later in the week if I can actually find it. There's like a there's like a quiz you can do. Uh, I think it's a quiz, and it's like uh, it's guessing if the name of a song is Kirby music or Toho music. And I wanna, I wanna try that. I was thinking of doing that, uh, just like here. But then I was like, no, nah, I'd rather do that as its own segment and not just like stick it in this VOD kind of deal. So I'll probably check that out at some point. It's not like it's gonna be long or anything. But I, I haven't seen anything on it. I only know that it exists, and I think there's like 107 questions. But that's all I know. I don't know anything about the questions themselves, so obviously that kind of thing you want to keep blind. It's hard. Is it hard? <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see how much I know. It ought to be fun. But yeah, it seems like it's worth getting its own slot for. Hmm. No, it's 107 total. So it's just... I think the idea is there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of Kirby songs, but the idea is they pick songs that seem very similar to each other. And it's not remember, it's not the music itself you're listening to, it's the title of the track. And that's one aspect of music that is probably lesser known. Like you could probably recognize if music is Tuhu, but do you remember the names of the tracks? Do you? For me, I have a vague recollection of uh, most of them. Some of them I remember pretty clearly. But I feel like enough of them will sound familiar enough that I'll be able to, uh, no, I'll probably do okay. We'll see though, we'll see. Oh no, what do you mean, oh no? Dude, shut up. Why don't you believe in your streamer? You think I'm gonna fail? Stop, don't, don't say oh no. What are you fucking knuckles? Shut up, shut up. Unbelievable behavior. What is a streamer to do when his chat doesn't believe in him? Huh? You guys are supposed to be my 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 cheer squad. Alright. Hmm. You're supposed to hype me up. You're supposed to go say go streamer go while posting Jun waving money. But instead all you do is all you do is post weird and post streamer losing weird. Streamer losing, Pepe giggle, that's what you do. <laughs> that's all you do. Or you just post that fucking emote. There's no reason to post that emote. You just post that fucking emote. That emote is like a sleeper style activation, man. One person posts it and then the, the whole hive mind just awakens. This is one guy at a bunch of attacks. Uh, attacks, accounts. My brain is fried. Man. I'm... Oh, there we go. I'm kind of tired, but I want to do something art-wise tonight. I kind of, like, have gotten really lazy. Not really lazy, mind you, but... Uh, like, I, I need to look at a reference and save the reference and do that, but I, I just don't feel like it when I really should. And it's a, it's a bad thing to do. It's a hindrance. I am stuck hardening now. Great. Because I clicked the wrong button. Alright. There is something I want to try, at least. Maybe I'll give that a shot tonight. But I'm very slow in the process. I do a lot of fixing and adjusting to get things to look nicer. I wanted to show the images that I did the last couple days. But I'm pretty sure that's not a good idea. Hmm. Because technically they were originally skeletons. 
Like, they were just kind of skeletons. They weren't anything. But as soon as I put a face on them, it kind of turned them into naked characters. And I didn't even really think of that. I don't think it's anything. There's no, like, anything shown. It's still, as far as I'm concerned, just, like, a, a simplistic model. But because I did the face on it, it's like, oh, wait, now it's, like, technically a character. And it's like, uh-oh, can't, can't, can't show that. Here's the model. Okay, I put Jun's face on it. Alright, uh, she's naked. Here's the model. Okay, uh, put Alice's face on it. Run out of time. Oh, uh, well, I guess she's naked. I just don't have time to finish the image past that, because I get to that point at, like, 2 a.m., and I gotta stop. I, I just, I gotta stop. It just doesn't work. It's good that I get to do at least one, though. But yeah, I'm really slow, and I'd like to speed up my process for sure. So I need to do more of them, learn how to do them faster, without sacrificing uh, quality. And the worst part is, well, I would say the worst part, but the fact that doing all this to learn the structure, and then when I actually have to draw the fucking character on top of it, that is a whole different ballpark that I'm in at that point. And that, that's gonna be rough. There are bits and pieces I know, but for the most part, it's like, shit, man. I learned how to get the, but you know what? Getting the model is very important, at least, because by default, oh, she turned blue. That's pretty cool, actually. <clears throat> by default, like, Getting the model right means you've gotten the arms and legs. You've gotten the whole, like, structure right. And sure, your clothes can look a little rough. Or your accessories can look a little rough. But if you get the body right, that you got the body right. So you can kind of distract from the weird-looking cloth by making thighs thicker than your head. Which I don't do. Or maybe I do. I don't know. Who am I to say what I do and don't? point is it's good because it's the it's it's the human body right getting the structure to look presentable and nice goes a long way although if you draw characters and cover them up pretty immensely then that won't really be the case but also you need the proper understanding of the skeleton to actually put clothes on them in the first place because it's kind of confusing to just freehand that i don't know how to do that Oh, so yeah, it's nice when I can make them look like the arms or legs look nice and then I put the clothes on and the clothes are like not that great, but it's, you know, it's okay. It's okay. We're just there to learn. But Tuesday kind of always sucks because I'm, uh, I'm tired. Left for Dead the Clones the clones cool screenshot all right here we go since you so desire another creepy pasta left for dead the clones all right hello i love left for dead and that's the story thanks for leaving thanks for listening how do recognition's OP and art construction stuff over time becomes a lot better and doing things that becomes a lot easier? Yeah. Yeah. But right now I'm at I'm at a point where I can only really do one at a day and that Well, actually, that's not even that bad. All things considered, I can do one in a night. I'd like to be able to do more. Being able to do like being able to sketch out bodies as a form of warm-up exercise is the level of speed I'd like to get to. Because I'm pretty sure in, like, art school, they have those gesture drawings that they want you to whip out in 30 fucking seconds. And if you can whip out a form in 30 seconds, that's kind of insane. Like, obviously, it's it's very bare, but it, get, it captures a lot. I don't really know how to do gesture at all. I don't really get it. Oh, I just remember bits and pieces of how to build anatomy, and then they look weird. Because I don't understand how the human body works when it contorts in certain ways. Alright, here we go. I'm gonna read the story now. Uh, there was more. Oh, never mind. We're not reading the story yet because we have more poopets. Enrica, I caught on the way here. So, hold on. You're getting you're getting left for shafted, chat. Left for shafted. 
Okay. Here we go. 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 That's item. That's items. That's items. Spook. I feel like I need to figure out how to like put my tablet down as well. I don't know. It's weird, but sometimes I feel like the way I my the way I position myself is not actually like good at all. But I can't really say for sure if that's the case because I don't have any real grounds to base that on. It could just be a skill issue. It's more than likely a skill issue. Alright, let's see what's going on in this dex today. Hmm. T Suika. Kaguya. I need Kaguya Saki. Okay. Oi, oi, oi. Kaguya. Kaguya. Well, Saki's easy to find. That's Kaguya. Okay. And Saki. And next. Momoyo. Do I have a little bonky? Hmm. Do I have little bonky? Oh yeah, I do. This is the head. Okay. Um... And the other one was... Momoyo. And one more. Hmm. Regular Sega. Okay. She's in here somewhere. I found her. Okay, let's get the show on the road. Back up we go. And I will read your story. I'll read it. Just give me a second. I like this music. This music is kind of making me want to go to Shin. It's kind of... It's kind of nice. It's kind of good. Probably click it and find out, but it's too late now. I've committed to the bit. Oh, God damn it. Okay, here we go. Hello, I love Left 4 Dead. You love you may love it too. The story changed my perspective. My my perspective of the on the game? I still play it frequently, but what happens to survivors that die? I think I may have found out. I was bored on a summer Tuesday morning. I had an idea, Left 4 Dead 2. I like playing expert. I invited my friends who play Left 4 Dead all the time to play with me. He said he would. I waited a few minutes and got a response. He said invite. I sent him an invite. No mercy I chose. If only I knew what I was getting into. What are you getting into there, buddy? <sighs> I got out my favorite gun and I said in chat, stick together. Somebody join our game. OP Vic GG. Or the merrier. I shoot some zombies through the window. Since this is expert, three hits will kill you. No. I tried to tell my friend, but he ran away. All of a sudden, he got swarmed. I got my friend's HP to red instantly, and I had to explain to my friend that on expert, you cannot be reckless. He understood, and we played a lot better. What the f... People... Could you imagine someone learning that fast? Hmm. Oh, 
man. Don't do that. Play a lot better. As I look through the window, I see something, a flashlight. When we finally got to the bottom of the apartments, I looked behind me in another flashlight. I kept seeing thing these whole round. I run past the fire and my friend grabs a chainsaw. It was already covered in blood. It was zombie blood. Strange. I get a double pistol and continue. We go into the house and I grab some pills. Francis goes down. I throw a Molotov to protect him and revive him. Hey, I know. I do that too. Damn. We should play sometime. I'm like really good. I, I know all the I know all the tricks. I'm certified gamer. Hold on, just applying toxic to everything. Okay. Okay, where was I? I got a double pistol and continue. We go into a house, I grab some pills. Francis goes down to a mall top. Another flashlight, this time coming to the safe house room. We make it to the safe house. My friend goes down, he's in chat. He says in chat, what happened? What was that? I asked him what happened, he says, nothing. I can't revive him, so I shut the safe house door. What? Second round comes and I am suspicious. I kill some zombies going through the tunnel. I go through the vent. My friend got shot at by Vic. I explain to Vic that my friend is new to expert. No reply. What? As, as we are going through the level, I realize that I am getting better. I haven't even lost any health. I then tank. I throw my Molotov. Everyone gets down by the tank. I wasn't going to lose tank death scream. What did I do? The tank just died. I revived my friends as they were freaking out in chat. Freaking out. He soloed that tank. What a gamer. Halfway through the level, we, we have no first aid kits. We were all below 50 HP, except me. I slowly become reckless and run into a horde. I get down, but I am revived by... Underst uh, underscore, underscore, underscore. This makes me a bit scared, but it was just a glitch. We make it to the level and my friend gets murdered again. He says WTF in chat. I shut the safe house door. This didn't feel right. Third round started. Everything was okay. Chat, I can tell I'm getting tired because I'm getting cold. Oh no. Oh no. I am, I am a sleepy boy. Hold on. started everything was okay we are at full HP with good guns we began to do this level I find a lot of guns I'll grab some and I deploy fire ammo I see something orange in the distance we go into the diner and see an orange survivor it was Lewis but I was Lewis the name was just underscores again I keep seeing more of these orange survivors I free them and they're just they're just clones of us. We have a team of four of us and ten of, the, and ten of these clones. I thought this was cool. We were doing pretty bad. I shoot the gas tank, then I explode, but no death scream. As soon as I respawn, the clones were still here. They were just us. We start the level again. It was the same, but much easier. The clones helped us a lot. Were they just bots? I was then shot by one. I was shot by a pistol. They can't be bots. Bots can't hurt people. This is true, by the way. A clone accidentally shoots my friend. My friend gets pissed and starts killing them. As soon as my friend shoots one, he was instantly killed. He says in chat, What? I was freaked out and wanted to hurry up and beat the level. Whoa. Whoa, it's not Purple Francis. No, it's not Purple Francis. I pulled the crane and we all have to run into the room. 
This part was always hard. I hate hordes. The zombies kept coming. All our HP was red. I rushed the level. Your HP's all red. Dude, that's the start of the fucking level. How did you fuck that up that bad? Weren't you playing God Mode in, in Chapter 2? Idiot. I run across the roof. Half of the clones are on the ground killing zombies. Most of them get down. I break the window and run into the room. The horde slowly stops. Then Jeff has disconnected. My friend left. I invite him again and he joins. He says he never disconnected, but I did. And the clones all respawn. How do you mean? How does that doesn't even make sense? He says he didn't disconnect, but I did. That's that doesn't make any sense because your game was still going and you invited him back in. What was he doing when he got that invite? Like that doesn't that doesn't, that doesn't even fly. That doesn't even fly. You fucking stupid dumbass. Fuck you. What? What? This is not the kind of music I need when I'm in this state. Where was I? <clears throat> then all the clones all respawn. They were bundled in a room. I check the next room. I see a tank. I say, tank, and take a screenshot. <laughs> the tank was a lot more damaged than other tanks. I shot it. I got a closer look at it. Some of the skin was gone, revealing bone. I got a bit scared at this point. As soon as one of our clones came, tank ran away and died a few seconds later. Then we walk into the eerie warehouse. We go into the warehouse, and all of a sudden, Zoe was doing death screams. She kept doing death screams and death screams. We go into the warehouse. She keeps doing it. Fucking shut up, Zoe. We go through the corridor and we were almost done with this level. Then all of a sudden, everyone death screamed. It was loud. During the sewers, there was a witch. I knew this was it because she blocked the path. I didn't want to go another round with this thing and about 50 survivors. All of a sudden, witch death scream. The witch was gone. No body or anything. Same thing happened to the tank. We go through the sewers and I climbed on the ladder all of a sudden fire everywhere my friend hadn't said anything then the fire was killing everyone I wasn't gonna die I took pills and ran to the safe house I was done everyone else was dead I survived no more rounds with these things then they all said ipsum dollar sit non sitter what what does that mean they all said, Ipsum dollar sit non siater. Okay. Did I just, did I just, did I just curse? Hmm? Hmm? Did I just say a bad word? Is that it for me? This is the end of my career? Alright, well, it's been fun. See you next time. I lost where I was again. God damn it. <clears throat> round over, no music, nothing, just black. As soon as the next round started, they were all gone. I searched everywhere, it came to nothing. I saw some flashlights in the distance. They always appear in dark corridors. There was a tank now. I say in chat, tank already? I go down, but my friend kills the tank. <clears throat> I get revived. I am now climbing the staircase, then I notice there are no sounds. I guess it was just my speakers acting up. <clears throat> my friend runs ahead of me all of a sudden. Some thing attacks me. It screeches through my earbuds. My sound is working? Then I see in chat five underscores. Then the name disappear from chat. My friend runs ahead of me and all of a sudden Bill death scream. My friend types in all caps, A ZOMBIE DIDN'T KILL ME! I quit the game. My paranoia takes the best of me. An hour later my friend stops playing Left 4 Dead. My friend doesn't talk about what he saw. He wants to forget it. My friend acts a lot stranger now. To this day, I still see flashlights in dark corridors. I wish I knew what he saw. What? That's it? The friend saw something creepy and won't tell. Dang, I want to know what it was now. Have you played the game again? If so, did anything strange happen? I think that one of the things you should do is explain whom the OP Vic guy was because make the protagonist question it once he or she leaves the game just to add detail and to add realism. Yeah, where did that guy go? Lacks originality. The format is pretty bad. I don't want to leave this comment with just simple bad CP. I'm going to leave it with a CC. Okay. Alright, chat. So, what did we learn? What exactly happened? 
Hmm? What happened? What 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 are these clones? And why what what killed him? And why did why was the tank afraid of the clones? I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't really I don't really get it. I guess I'm just not smart enough for these things. This is a this is a skill issue. This is a reader's comprehension issue. Be careful when you play Left 4 Dead. Well, it only happens when you die, I think, or something like. I don't really know what. I, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't really know. Hmm. What's that noise? Oh, it's over. Uh. Okay. Infinite peace. Okay. What about... Always good. Always a good moment. The clones were cloning and they were acting like, like griefers. That's all I really got out of the story. But something really scary happened in that game. And his friend has never been same since. And I just, I'm just very curious what his friend saw and why he didn't quit the game instantly. Also, wasn't he the host? I, you know what? Maybe he wasn't the host of the server. Maybe he was just playing on a dedicated server. Forget that's an option because I only play local server for mods. Clone Bill. Well, Chad, I give that one, um... Yeah, I give that one. It was very confused. I don't really understand what happened. Uh, there was no payout. There was no build-up. I mean, there was build-up, but there was also random details that didn't really matter. Like, how good this guy was at gaming did not matter. Who is this OP Vic GG guy? Where did, where did he come from and where did he go? Why did the game disconnect? Why did the bots shoot you? Why did people just death scream? Why is everything on fire? Why were the zombies more afraid of you than them? Then you are then they then you are afraid of them. <laughs> there are questions that I have desires to have answered. That's really the long and short of it. Somebody please contact me at this number and tell me what the fuck it all means. And your reward will be one highlight redemption I actually can't I can't give you a I can't give you channel points I can kind of give you channel points by putting up a prediction and being like will streamer and then you click yes no and I give the points to the the person I intend to but the thing is everybody will be there so I have to do it in an offline chat secret backdoor meeting <laughs> A secret backdoor meeting. It doesn't really work though, because I think you need you need multiple for Gamba. I don't know for sure. I don't know, I just work here, dude. Alright, Kagu Kagu Kagu. It's not business, because I don't actually make a profit on it. There's no actual money to be found in channel points. However, I don't. The re I think the reason you're not really allowed to do anything specific to channel points is because you can put incentives in channel points, which means you can put there is a, a there is an arbitrary value to them, which while not strictly monetary, can be desired through, you know, monetization paying people for channel points because it's in the rules you're not allowed to you're not you know i've said you're not allowed you're really not supposed to like give people uh roles and privileges and stuff like that because they spend money on you you're not supposed to do that you're not supposed to be able to buy your way into things that's why bits are kind of weird because bits are like you know you use them in place of direct money you're buying in Gambas are banned in some countries. Yeah, I know. You can't you can't participate in the gamba with uh, channel points. It's 
too scary. Gotta be careful, those kind of things. I guess. Am I gonna be able to like survive the next hour or two? I'm gonna have to. I gotta do something, but I'm really tired. I'm really tired. Maybe I'll draw a circle and call it a day. I don't know. But I also gotta eat, because I'm hungry. Oh man, this is such a predicament I'm in. What do I do, chat? What's the correct answer? Level 100, I can't even two-shot these damn things. There's not enough time to uh, do anything more. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap up soon when I have to take uh, when I have to take Kutaka back down to get her PP restored. I'll probably just end it there. There's so many more puppets. I gotta get so many more. Hmm. Well, what what could I even like? What can I even make a channel point incentive? You know, because the channel point incentives are just like. They're like editing emotes, which I think is fine to just have cheap. Uh, highlighting the message, which is fine if people don't like spam it. But some some people have uh, some people have channel points submissions that like turn you your streamer into a fucking Tamagotchi. Where you just you put channel points in to issue basic commands keep your streamer happy and healthy <laughs> hmm. and then some of them have channel points where you you spend channel points and a fucking thing pops up on screen and it's extremely obnoxious i don't have a webcam they could be funny but i just don't think there's any real merit on my stream for them i don't really know how to incorporate them in a way that i wouldn't find obnoxious so that's why i just kind of leave it alone and i know some people have accumulated a very large sum of these points and nothing to spend it on but like that's your fault not mine some people just have some people even have in uh, incentives that literally just exist to waste you can spend one million points to spend one million points you can just do that if you want i don't have something like that though hmm you only have half. That's a lot of points. You get bonus points when you're subbed. It adds up. You just gotta gamba it. That's all. Go big or go home. Some people some people just like live in the high roller state. But we don't do gambas. Nobody's here to do gambas. I don't stop the stream to do it. You've seen some some gambas are like insane. Some people take them way too seriously. All right, one more kill. You can't even gamble with your points sometimes. Well, shit. I guess we're just triple kicking then. All right, very good. Send him back home. Hmm. You give me one bajillion points, and you can have the stream. Here you go. I will give you the controller for ten bajillion points. Seems pretty good, right? Good deal. Hmm. No gamba, no product, only points. Listen, man. There's nobody here to do it. You want me to do it? I can't pop a Gamba in the, every time I want to do it. I don't have a Gamba idea. I'm here playing the game, man. I'm playing the fucking game. You want a Gamba? You need to get somebody on the job. But if you're if you're the guy who runs the Gamba, you can't participate in the Gamba anymore. The house always wins. All right, chat. That's where I stop for the day because it's 10 o'clock. So, more progress, more gradual progress, so that's pretty great. Uh, there's still so much more I have to do, but we will get through it at a, at a 
Okay. Snail's pace. Hmm. Hmm. But we will do it, and I'm gonna do it, because I said I'd do it, and then when I do it, we will open a bl block for new, fun, exciting... Stop doing that. New, fun, exciting things, like, uh, Pokemon, or Pokemon, and Pokemon, or even Pokemon. So yeah, more, more of this in the future.